Uh, okay. Um, just to chime in, I see some of the things you guys are talking about. Um, yeah, I, I, I personally know Jacob. <clears throat> and um, uh, <laughs> guys, the things you guys are hearing on the Internet, unfortunately, a lot of people that you hear out there who say negative things about our organization, they really don't know our doctrine. And, and in particular, unfortunately, and I'm talking from experience, the master teaches children. So I'm, I, cause I, I know Jacob personally, and I can assure you he does not know the doctrine cause he never studied the doctrine. And whatever advice, I uh, do not judge this doctrine by watching the behavior of Padabab Yunanan nor his students. What happens is you get all these people, right? Who get on YouTube and they say all these weird and adverse things about our organization, but never explain to the people what we teach. So their issues are a little bit different. It's very detailed. I'm not one who goes into those things because I don't like what they're doing on the internet because they're talking about things that are private to our organization and they're not meant for the whole globe. But I can't control them. I can't control what they put out. Not to mention, you don't put sensitive information like that out to the, to the whole world. Man, oh man, family, y'all are in for a real special treat tonight. I mean, I got somebody in the building powerful, and trust me, y'all gonna love this tonight. Y'all familiar with um, the sister Uma? Uma? Uh, yeah, she was on the other brother's channel, and they was going in. Well, that was the younger sister. I brought in the big dog, the heavy sister, the top one family you know what i'm saying you got to go for the top when you want the real information you got to go to the elderly sister if you really want the true information and i speak of none other than sister leah in the building what's going on sister how you doing say that again because you was on mute i just unmuted you how oh, you doing i'm doing pretty good and yourself i am highly blessed i must say I'm oh, thankful. Man, let the people know who you are. Introduce yourself. Leah. Everybody know me as Leah York. Um, I've been in and out. Most people know. I've had a little bit of, I always tell people, I've had a, both of, a little bit of all the lives, community, Ansar. I mean, even in the street. I, I don't hide that. Everybody know. Everybody that knows me know I'm up front. I'm not going to dodge anything. It is what it is. I'm here for the truth. I'm here to tell everybody what they, what, what is what it truly is those mm. that know they know those that don't you're falling for the trick all right we're gonna get right into it um you know it's been a lot of crazy things going on this past weekend and bringing it into the week right um with your little sister talk to us man your sister uma was on another platform recently and spoke about her siblings how much was truthful and how much was fabricated according to your perspective i would say 70 percent of it was lies because 70 percent that's 70%, a lot 70 percent wow. the thing is and i say 70 percent because she's not telling the whole story and what happened 
she has her perspective of what happened. Let's keep in mind when we left Ansar, it was 89, between 89 and 90. You figure all of my mother's kids are three years apart because she's not the only child. I'm the oldest between my father and my mother. And you figure if I was nine, she was six. How much do you really remember? How many people can really say they remember something from when they were six years old? Unless something traumatic happened to you. Now, to bring clarity to this and to show that you know exactly what you're talking about, this is the same sister from the same mother. You both have the same mother. We have the same mother, the same father. Okay. And I'm going to dive into that whole story. I saw people on the internet saying, where was her mother? Her mother was there, but y'all going to hear more about that. Okay. Um, so talk to me about... Um, she also made some broad statements about your father organization and its members creating a pedophile and molestation culture within the organization. How much of that is accurate um, from your perspective? I would say a lot of people were touched, molested, however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say that they bred them. The community at one point brought people from everywhere into the doctrine. I mean, pretty much anybody who was willing to read, get a Shahada, next thing you know, they moved in. Nobody bothered to do, and I mean, the internet wasn't as, as it is now. So you can only go by what people said. Um, they went through a physical. If they passed the physical, they were good. And these were people from all different walks of life. I mean, it was crackheads that moved in. It was people that were street walkers that moved in. It was people that was drug dealers, thieves. I mean, name them. But then again, you also had people who were doctors, nurses, educators. You know, let's just not paint the picture that it was all bad. Of course, like in every situation, you're gonna have some people that's just gonna paint anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, talk to us about your relationship with your father, with Pops. How was your relationship with your, with your father? My relationship with my father. My father and I had a different type of relationship. Of course, all of his kids are gonna say that they had a different relationship because that's exactly what it was. But let's just be for real. Out of all of 89 of his kids, he truly had a, a real relationship that I know of with maybe about 12. And I'm just being realistic. And when I say a relationship with his, the, the close relationship, I mean, they were able to communicate with him. They were able to visit him. They were able to just walk up to his house without anybody questioning, you know? Um, and Uma wasn't one of them, but we're gonna get into that. Um, my relationship with him, I mean, I'm, I was always an outspoken child, you know? I say what's on my mind. That's just how, I don't have filters. So I was that child when, you know, he asked something, I would tell him the truth. I didn't care whose feelings it, was, it would hurt, even if it hurt it his. It is what it is. Um, I built a, a relationship with him. I would say we really started getting close. No, actually, I had a relationship with him back in Ansar days because when we used to visit our parents for family day, I used to go in Backstreet and spend time with him. So while a lot of kids was in the movie theater watching movies, I used to go up these spiral stairs that led up to where the office and his house and stuff was. I mean, I remember spending a lot of time back then at my grandmother's house, even though I was kind of scared of her back then, which is his mother. I spent time back there. My mother spent a lot of time in the office. So when you talk about a lot of people um, you know, knew everything that was going on. If you stayed in the books, you stayed in the office, you kind of didn't. I mean, that's mm -hmm. my mother stayed. She always worked. She stayed focused on her work. Um, when I was about 19, my father, I mean, he had my cell phone number. I had his. And one day he called me and said, Hey Leah, I need you to come to Athens. And I'm like, um, okay. You know, I used to trade, I used to go and visit him frequently. I would go up to the land either every other weekend or every weekend. At that time, I lived in Columbia, South Carolina. And um, 
I said, okay, I went up there, visited him, and he was like, I bought you something. And I'm like, what? He was like, here's some keys. And I'm like, keys for what? He had bought me a car and then gave me money for my insurance. And he was like, now you don't have an excuse not to come and see me. That's the mm. type of relationship I had with my father. Right. Um, shout out to Chuck Morgan. Let me give my brother Chuck Morgan a shout out for bringing this and making this interview happen, man. And of course, Morpheus, my brother Morpheus. So, um, yes, let's continue to go on being that we're on this topic first before you really get into the meat of what you really want to talk about. Um, did you or any of your siblings know that your father was molesting? And when you found out, how did that impact really hit you? I'm not going to say we all really knew. Some might have. When we talked about it, we talked about it among family. It wasn't at a point where, you know, everybody knew. If right. you heard about it, it was like a hearsay or somebody else who might have said they were victims because we all grew up together. It was a small community. I mean, when you talk about grew up together, we all shared the same crib together. You know, we all ate the same meal together. We all got beaten together. Like you talk about a community most people can't even imagine and when i try to explain people my life most people be like right they don't believe me you know but of course me coming out in the world i see why you know um so when you hearing people that you grew up with say what happened to them i mean what can you do he was a powerful person back then that's like somebody trying to go up against the president and you're like i'm taking you down good luck that's the type of level it was on back then. You can't just, you know, think that you're just gonna take him down. It doesn't work like that. It would have to have been a force to actually take him down. So for people to be like, oh, well people knew and people did nothing. Yeah. Did you know, did you know your father? I mean, did you love your father? Of course, I, and I still do. I mean, I, and I tell people, you know, I. I always tell people to like I'm big on genealogy and I always tell people like people that lose their parents a lot of them always talk about how how it's like a piece of them that leaves as well and technically it is you know I love my father to death you know if my father came out would I be hunky dory and be all up next to him no I'm a very independent woman I'm doing my own thing I'm grown now I what I wanted back then was to get to know him as the person that he is. And I got what I wanted. So no, I love my father. I mean, like I like I tell people all the time, me and him stayed in touch. These are all letters between him and I. This thing full of letters too. Like we stayed in touch with each other. So people all the years. I'm one of these people. So I would say me thinking of all the beautiful women that Dr. York been with. Uh -huh. Why would you molest a child or a kid? So I'm asking you, um, how many women would you say had Dr. York's child? 62 that I've counted. Six, 62 women. Some people will look at that like, nah, you got to be kidding me. Right. 62 women. So how many siblings, according to your knowledge, would you say you had? Not according to my knowledge. When he told me he did not have a hundred kids, he has 89 children. Exactly. And I've counted every last one of them. I've had <laughs> parents of my siblings help me with this. I've had even the ones that people think, oh, well, maybe this one, they've been at it. Well, this one who lived, who was born in Trent, at it. Everybody's been at it. This one that passed away, everybody's been at it. Mm. Now, according kids. to your work and that, you do some good work. Um, dealing with genealogy oh of course have you met in i mean have you still have children um siblings out there that you have never met and if so have you been trying to find them and look them up no i don't look for them <laughs> i'll say a lot of them know me and i know a lot of them so mm -hmm. i don't i've been the one who been able to connect some of them between each other you know like okay you don't know her oh hey how you doing you know introduce each other to each other you know it used to be funny because years ago um i had a sister who everybody kept telling me i looked like 
and I had never met her. Everybody just kept telling her, "You y'all two look just alike." Interestingly enough, we lived down the street from each other, and when we met each other, it was like a instant click, and we actually did look very much alike each other. Um, she had never really actually got to know her father, and you know, I had brought her up to the land just so that she can get to know him, you know, and meet him. Unfortunately, it didn't go. I guess it was like the wrong time, wrong place. Um, but it's like I've always tried to bridge the gap if I could with some of them. And that whole story where, you know, she had a sister that was like jealous of her and hating on her. Like most of the time you get in trouble for even trying to, you know, do things like that with him. Majority of the time, like, you, you, you know, cause he, he feels like it's a time and a place for everything. So it's like, if you did that, most of the time you would get in trouble. If there was ever a time where any of his children would have woke up in the middle of the night and it had to be shipped off and he did not know about it, the next day you were back on the land. Nothing ever happened on the land without him knowing. And that story with, oh, Sakina was the one waiting there to bring her up to New York. If everybody who knows Sakina, and I'm sure a lot of people in this group, have they, if they ever met her, anybody that knows Sakina knows, she's not transporting anybody off the land without the say-so of, or word from Pop. It just doesn't happen like that. Sakina Shout out to Sister him. Sakina. I know Sakina very well, and I know she's about that money, and she's about her paper, rightfully so. Um, me and her have worked for a while, I think maybe four or five years, um, you know, she would come down and get a lot of DVDs from me and I would give it to her wholesale and she would take them back and get it in. So she definitely was about her paper. Shout out to Sister Sakina. Um, let me ask you, did any of the um, your brothers and sisters get treated differently or treated better than the others that you know of? Yeah, just like any parent. I'm not, I mean, I only have two kids, so I can't even say I favor one over the other, even though they might have a different story. My mother had five kids. We all can say she favored one over the other. You know what I mean? It's all everybody's perspective. And at the same time, why would you expect her to treat you any di I mean, like, I wouldn't expect my mother to treat me the same way that she would treat my brother. Like, I gave my mother hell. You know what I mean? Who got treated the best and who wore the crown? Out of my mother's kids? Yes. I would well, say let's like, say out of out of the all of all of your siblings that you know of, that was around your circle. Which one of them wore crowns? At they all had different. Who got periods. treated the best and wore the crown? Okay, they all had different periods of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say my oldest brother did, my older sister did, Jake definitely did at a period. Let's just be for real. Um, like we all did at. I'm not gonna say we all did at some point. I mean, my time didn't come until much later, you know, um, all his kids, all of them just didn't have that relationship with him though. So it's a little hard for me to explain because he would even talk about how some of the kids relationship was impacted by their parents. So if one child, he used to say uh, there was different groups of the mom, he used to say, you know, some of them were intelligence some of them he met as dr york they were groupies some of them you know they were just um he used to call them space cadets because they were just into the books and ooh, they were spaced out um so it's i mean they all for, for the for the 12 that i say that has had relationships with him over the years i would say they all did at different times it depends on who was there, who was accessible, how close they were. I mean, if he wanted you, he'd fly you in town. If he wanted to see you for the weekend, he'd fly you in town. How many of them can really say he flew them into town? Not many of them can. I see somebody coming in already saying, um, not adding up. What do you mean by that, sister, yeah, when please. you say not adding up? I don't I don't get what you're saying. This is the sister, this is one of his um one of his oldest daughters here. And um, so let me ask you this. When I look at your sister's um, interview, mm -hmm. I would assume that she was treated like the worst human being on earth, the way she tell the story. Who mm -hmm. would you say was treated the worst out of all the siblings? Under your mother? Yes. Definitely not her, okay? okay? She only lived on the land four months, three months. Four, four three, months? 
I'll say three to four months is how long she lived on the land. Mm -hmm. And during the time that she was on the land, she was so busy. It was two, uh, two of his other kids. They're very all close, similar to age. Um, she was too busy trying to fight for his attention and his love from the other two kids. So it's like, I mean, what do you do in a, in a situation like that? I mean, how, how do you try to please, you know, all of your kids who are at the same age? I mean, you can't. It's a lot of kids. Everybody know that. It's a lot of kids. When, um, when Uma spoke about her sister being inappropriate with her children by asking if the children wanted to treat, wanted to, um, wanted treats at a late night hour, what was she implying? That um, her sister was trying to what, groom the children? What was she really trying to imply by that? I don't know, because that's the first time I've ever heard of that yeah, one. Yeah, she she was um she was saying you um not you, but she said one I of her sisters. To say it definitely wasn't me. Yeah, one of her sisters was like inappropriately asking her child, do you want to treat in a late night hour? Her as child? Though, yes. Um, let me see. Um, spoke about her sister being inappropriate with her child. Oh, yes. it's definitely hold on. Let, let's get this clear. Like you were trying to groom the child. It's me. Now I'm not saying you. I'm saying you one of her sisters. She I spoke barely about. spent time around her children. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't I've never even met her youngest child. Let's get that clear. You okay? never met your niece? I've never met nothing. my niece. Oh, because there's a reason. I have her blocked on everything. It means I don't want to see you and I don't want you to see what I'm doing in my life. Because She's the type of person, and y'all, everybody wonder, well, all this tragedy happened in her life. Why wasn't her family there? She's the kind of person that brings drama to every situation. That's why. You ever have that one family member who can go to a wedding and all of a sudden start a whole argument and be loud and ratchet and, yeah, everybody has that one person in the family, and they don't even need alcohol to, be at, to act that type of way. Mm -hmm. That's her. So yeah, whenever people get together and there's family reunions and there's little events going on, she don't get invited. You're right. When we used to have little things, you'll see pictures of a bunch of the York family, but she's not in all of them because most of the time she wasn't around. I mean, like I said, she's the type of person who brings drama to almost every situation. You can't just come to a situation and just chill out. Just enjoy the scene. Like everything positive is a negative for her. She could be at somebody's funeral and honey, it, it would be something with her. Hmm. Yo, that, I mean, that's, that's kind of sad though. Um, cause I don't really know what happened, but you, when was the last time you seen your sister? The last time I seen her must have been 2000 and I say about 2012. 2011. Was that the time you kicked her down the stairs or something? I did. Because she was, she, first of all, I'm the type of person, everybody know me. I can dislike you. I can, all types of stuff. I'm not going to sit up there and talk mess about any of my nieces, any of my nephews. To me, it's certain things that's like off. You don't, you don't do that. You don't date any of your siblings, whoever they dated. You don't talk about your nieces and nephews. I don't even like, if I got to deal with them, I let their parents deal with them. That's the type, the type of person that I am. So we were walking up the steps in Bushwick, 717. And my brother had just had hip surgery. And she, he was behind her. Mm -hmm. And this has been an ongoing situation with her. Everything was nitpicked. We had just come from somewhere. And she said some foul stuff about my daughter. I turned around and kicked her right down in flights of steps with my brother behind her. And I apologized to him after it, but that's how much she make, she make, she'll make a person snap, literally. Like you'll be, you'll be sitting in jail, regretful. Well, maybe not regretful, but you'll be sitting in jail messing with her. How much pain would you say, y'all, and I'm gonna say you too, cause they all come out of your mother's womb. How right. much pain would you say, Y'all have caused your mother behind y'all disunity and not coming together. You know what I'm saying? She, my mother is at a point where she's just done with it all. Um, she, she's 
she's like, as far as, you know, that one is concerned, she's done. She feels like she's tried. I mean, even my older sister has tried. Like, oh, y'all should talk it out. There's nothing for me to talk about. I mean, nothing at all. And the thing about it is, like I tell people, when your life is thriving without a person, why bring them back in to turn it all back around? Do your older sister get along with Uma? Yeah, she does. Okay. All right. Now, here's a question I want to ask you, because um, I've heard something about this before. Okay. But I didn't get all the details. Like so I said, I'll bring ask it all, bring it all. Yeah, so I'll ask you. Did any of your brothers or sisters ever get caught doing the same thing which your father was accused of and con and was they convicted of doing doing it to a child? To no. one of the children? No. No. Okay, well I heard something but, like you know, that. Before. I always tell people if you question stuff, you know, you can pull up court documents. Hello, mm -hmm. it's free. You can pull it up. Or you might just have to pay twenty five cents a page. Come on. If right. you really if you're really that nosy and you must know, mm -hmm. you can pull it up. Your your older brother, your big brother Jacob. Shout out to Jacob and hopefully he'll come on soon. I would love to interview that brother because he got so much got um, information. Right. I heard he got um kicked off a Tahaka show yesterday. Ah, I don't know. No. I don't know Tahaka why the hell got, Tahaka kicked that pissed. brother off. He was the big deal. Why would, you I'm kicked the say, wrong dude off, Tahaka. He was pissed off because when Tahaka started talking about how he wanted a one-on-one -on -one between him and Fair and Jacob, and Jacob was like, no, me and my sister could talk it out one-on-one. -on -one. He got pissed off, click, kind of hung up on him, and then started talking all the mumbo-jumbo afterwards. Yeah, you kicked but, the wrong brother off, man. I can't wait. To, Jacob, come on here. He got the floor. Right. So, right. um, Jacob, our brother Jacob, um, he mentioned that his dad wanted to borrow a million dollars from him. Have you ever heard of that before? Not until he said that. Okay, he wanted to borrow a million dollars from him at one point in time. How much of that is true? And um, why I mean, would your father want to borrow a million dollars from his son? Because, see, a lot of people don't know, Jacob, he was producing Little Kim. He Jacob was producing was Biggie. Well, he I'm was in gonna, the music industry. That's why Tahaka, he kicked off the wrong dude. I'm not <laughs> even going to say it was. I'm not Damn. even going to say it was. Because was is a past tense. Jake is still doing his thing. Okay? okay. And let's just say, Jake is not the type of person to lie. Anybody that know him know he's not going to lie. I mean, what, what does he have to lose or gain? Look at where he is in life. So, what do you think he's going to lie about that for? Yeah. Murder Inc. Somebody said also Murder Inc. So they know who the brother is. Right. Yeah, right. see. Oh, man. So, oh, man. Let me ask you this, though. Mm -hmm. Talking about Polite. Have you ever right. met Polite? I've seen him crossing high and by, but we don't have like conversations. No, I would. That's not how I consider I know somebody. So, no, I don't know you. Polite said that um, he went to the land and. Um, Dr. York is the one that gave his wife his name, her name. Okay. Yes. He gave everybody. Okay, wait. Let me fix that part. Yes, go ahead. Did he, like, go to her and say, hey, your name is ABC? Or did she get a name because, like, half of the people, you got a card in the mail, an AEO card, and that was your name. Now, when you tell people that, you need to be a little bit more clear on how you got your name. Um... I've heard this before. <laughs> I want to ask you this. Sure. People told me that they, with, um, the brothers and sisters that was a part of the land and that was down with Dr. York, they said, if you coming in there with a fine woman, Dr. York could send your ass somewhere else like to Philly. And the next thing you know, he got your woman. <laughs> Let me tell you yeah, how much of that is true. Oh, don't put it past him. Like he said, mm. don't know one human being to belong to anyone. That's what oh, he would say. That's what Dr. So Yoke however said. you want to take it, that's that's just what it is. I mean, he used to say not mm -hmm. one person belonged to anyone. So he felt like if he wanted, Jake is asking for a link. So he said if, you know, his attitude was if he wanted it, if the, if the person made themselves available, if they were an adult and it was consensual. What do you think about the shooting incident that revolved around your brother that landed polite in jail. Your sister Uma said he was aiming and targeting at her. He wanted to kill her. 
How much of that can you share with us? I will say the only victim in this situation is the one that got shot. Mm. There's always more to this story and what y'all are getting is only the icing on the cake because there's so many more seven layers in between. So again, the only person who was the victim is the one that got shot. The reality of it is she's been fighting for his building for years, kicking everybody in, even calling the cops on her own siblings if she felt like they were trying to stay there too long. You know, New York had this whole thing called squatters, right? If you stayed in the property more than 30 days, I don't know if they still, if it still exists today, then you pretty much can claim the property up until a person kicks you out through court. And everybody knows the court process in New York, it would take you years. Pops mm -hmm. wanted her out of his building for a lot of reasons. He wanted her out of the building. Now, I'm gonna give you some stories that I heard from brothers from Brooklyn mm -hmm. that been around in the land. Polite came in as a crip. Polite was a crip and he didn't fully make that step over a crip. And Uma and your brothers in them, they were blood. They was in the game. This is the stuff that I'm hearing. They was also in the game. And so this is how this whole thing started with the Hold fight on. between Polite Hold and, and I just want to make I just want to make sure I'm hearing this right. Are you saying Uma was in the game? Yes. This is the stories that I'm also hearing that she was also a part of the Blood Nation. Everybody that know Uma knows she ain't fighting nobody. And she definitely ain't letting <laughs> yeah, herself get jumped. Yeah, she's real frail and skinny. Spot. And she's what? not letting herself get jumped. Let that be on the record. Because she's not. First of all, if anybody know what the initiation process is, I highly doubt that one. We could go on. Yes. So you never heard of anything like that before? She ain't wear red too much. Okay, what about the um the brothers or uh, something like that? The brothers, I don't know about, but I know okay. for sure not her. She ain't getting herself jumped into nothing. All right, shout out to my brother King Simon as well for making this possible too. Um, I want to just let you flow and go on what you want to talk about before I keep asking you all these questions. I want you to get ahead in and get your build in. Ooh, because I know you got a lot on your mind that you want to talk about. You know it's a crazy thing because I'm in a different place than majority of my siblings. I live a peaceful and quiet life. The person half of these people probably know me as or was. I'm changed. I'm a different person from who I used to be. I mean that rowdy Leah is different. That you know don't give a care don't care attitude is different. So when I'm sitting here and people are like texting me, Instagramming me, messenger me, and I'm like, what in the world is going on? This is the first time. And I'm like, in my head, okay, I wasn't mentioned. Cool. But the disrespectful part was, you know, nobody cared about her. She was in foster care. Yeah, the story behind that is that she called the cops on her own mother she must have been about either 15, 16, between that age. She called the cops on her own mother and told them that she was starving. No food was in the house. When they came in the house, they opened up cabinets and fridge. You know, my mom used to be on some health nut stuff. You know, if you, she, that's just how she was. You know, you eating brown rice, I mean, black rice instead of white rice. Like, that's just how she is. And when they opened up, Jake needs the link. And when somebody he, said Jacob wants to come in, um, he is. He's trying to get. Um, if you want to come in, Jacob, um, what I'm going to do is post the link in the chat. All I want is Jacob to come in. I'm not letting nobody else in. And uh, I hope you got your name on it, Jacob, so I could um, yeah, know who yeah. you are. All right, brother. So she called the cops on her mother, and the cops asked her. Hold on, woman. The okay. link is in the chat, Jacob. So. Click that link and you should be able to come right in and join this um, build. Go ahead, sister. They told her she has two options. Foster care or you could stay here. Okay, she ended up in foster care. So what do you think she chose? So you divorced your own family at this point. So when you out here looking for support from family, remember you divorced them. You know, 
you sit up there and you talk about, or you let people drag your mother as if she wasn't there. No, your mother tried a lot for you. You talk about how people keep not wanting to deal with you. You really do have a mental health issue. People that know you know that. As much as you're like, I'm not diagnosed, I'm not on medication. A lot of people running around here not on medication and got issues, boo. So the reality of it is, you need to go talk to somebody because your issues is deeper than your mother, is deeper than your father, is deeper than even polite and all this other stuff that you have going on. So when you talk about a lot of people not supporting you, look at your history. Look at look at how you cheated your own siblings. Look at how many of your siblings you called the cops on. How many of them went to jail because you called the cops on them? Um, so how you expect people to just treat you and forget, like, I'm not the type of person to forget, so that's definitely out out the question. Let I don't me forget. ask you, um, she never spoke to you about Polite and why Polite tried to kill her? This, this is was, okay. crazy. I think a lot of people have the timeline. This happened in 2007. Mm. This is almost 14 years ago. And I'm just hearing about this on Tahaka show. A lot of people just hearing about this. Yeah. This wasn't, it's like, if you didn't live in New York among Sakina and their crew and knew what was going on, you kind of didn't know that that even happened. So it's like, she makes it seem like everybody knew. Everybody didn't know. The only reason I knew was because after the incident, she called me on my cell phone. At this point, I'm living in Georgia. Who's going to go all the Do way you remember what she said when she called you? She told me that our half brother was shot. I'm sorry. Our, our okay. He's my oldest sister's brother we don't share the same mother same father but as you know how communities are we still he's still our brother but she turned around and called and was like he got shot i mean what was we we in a we in a whole different state well what, what do we you gonna do? do you know how polite was able to beat that case because he said he took he said that he defended himself in there. oh well good for him i didn't know do that you know how he def um, beat that case you think he snitched or anything or I mean, <laughs> that's like... I'm that, just asking. I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, my face expression is so off. Um, I'm not going to say he snitched. I mean, because who would he have to snitch on to get off on a charge like that? I mean, it, it wasn't even no proof that it was him because everybody kept saying it was the other person who he was with that did it. So... Right, right. Why, why would he have to turn around and, you know, tell? And I mean... If I know I didn't do something and I felt like I could beat my own case, I'd stand up for my own self too. Did she ever come to you and told you it was meant for her? Like he targeted her? Never. Oh, so I don't, yeah. All right, let me take a time out to um, introduce um, Jacob in the building. What's going on, my brother? Peace to you. Uh, peace, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good, man. All wise and civilized. Glad to have you in the building, man. Okay. All right, cool. I'm here. I'm here to hey support bro, myself. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Thank you. How you doing? Good, good. Is it anything that you would like to add on to what your sister is talking about? I have no idea about that particular incident at all. First time I've ever heard about that incident was last night when uh, wow. when the player brought it up. I had no idea that incident happened. I knew nothing about it. All I did was I was very clear with her that if she believes that my father and our father did not sanction that then she doesn't know him very well and truthfully she really doesn't you know so you know you know he has a hundred children right so some like i said many people were put in many tears in his life right so she probably wouldn't have understood his personality she's probably been around him six months and out of her whole life you know mm -hmm. um so you know he'll pretend that he didn't know he did know he did like you know i'm you know i don't know if he sanctioned for somebody to shoot her you know what I'm saying? But I'm sure she, he probably asked people to remove her. By any means uh, necessary. By any, well, you know, by any hold means up, necessary. Hold up, hold up. Say that part one more time. By any means necessary. No, not that part. Before, what Jacob was saying. What I'm saying is, I don't know if he sanctioned, sanctioned anyone to shoot her or shoot anybody. But I'm sure he told them to remove them. Because I've, I've seen him do that before many a times. Now, you're saying, who told who to remove them? I, my, my father probably told them. To remove from okay. he did not want um, her living there he's i've seen him do that to other siblings of mine and other people we gotta we gotta make sure it's clear because now it sounds like and this is what people will try to say jacob yes that your father put a hit out on his own daughter 
I don't know if he put a hit out on his own daughter. I don't know right, if he right. put it. So, you know, I think that he probably said have her removed. And I think other people did what they thought. Because he's, he's, right. he's, he's, you know, if you know about the, uh, 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 the Green situation from Brooklyn, my father, you know, has some problems with the, with the local city councilman. And he just does these things where he goes, if somebody could just make this guy go away. And then people do it the way they do it, right? So he never really directs anybody to directly do things like that. He just suggests. But I, I don't know how he felt about him player personally. But all I will say is, I don't know if he... I've never seen him put a hit on one of his kids before. Um, but definitely he would say, yo, get her out of there. And like I said, he's the king of like throwing rocks and hiding his hands. He's great at that. So I know she doesn't want to believe he's that type of person, you know, whatever that is, but it's that's his style. Because I've seen him do it to other siblings in my life. Okay, so why you why I got you here, my brother, I would like for um your sister Leah to clear up some things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Leah. Yes. You did a testimony about Jacob being an agent. Yeah, he's behind it all because we all sat down and we talked and, you know, we was going to figure out how we was going to set it up. Um, we were just going to back each other's story in whichever way we could, even if it meant lying for each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that. That testimony was made up. I was told to say that so that okay. it can all match in with this whole thing of him being the first to go through with this whole field situation. Long story short, like I tell people all the time, back then I had nothing to lose. So it was like, okay, I could do it. That's not a problem. I mean, me and Jacob never had an issue. Me so and hold Jacob, on, you was you was um told to um to yep. to do something like that to Jacob when you never had an issue with him. Yeah. Why did you feel the need that you would go and because do that? back then. Well, and still today, even though I realize that it's tarnished, it is what it is. Back then, my family's history, my family's name was more important for him to get out on the charges that he had than for me to even care about anything else. Everybody know I'm big on genealogy. I'm big on family history. I was hoping that my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren would never have to Google this. And this is what is left at. Would to you me, mind revealing? That's embarrassing. Would you mind revealing who taught who told you to do this? Or are you going? You I don't can't. Mind? Okay, I can, but they know who they are. They know who they are. Okay, okay, uh, brother Jacob. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing stories, and I'm glad I got you here because now you can clear it up. Mm -hmm. People are saying that it was you who went to the FBI first on your father. How much truth does that hold? Um. Well, I mean, there's there's proof in I mean, in who went to the FBI first about my father, right? Yes. I mean, yeah. like I said yesterday, I, I mean, I love my dad, right? I've never had a personal issue with my father ever in life, right? All my issues with my dad or whatever issues that might arise always involved other people. Um, and so at the end of the day, I always tell people like it's proof. It wasn't brain surgery. Who who wrote the first letter? Pauline admitted she wrote the letter, right? She admitted she wrote a letter to the GBI. Nicole admitted she wrote letters to the GBI. That had nothing to do with me, right? right? That was other people that wrote letters, you know, um, that it, an FBI and all of that stuff. That had nothing to do with me. I mean, you got all these people that say they're from the streets or they understand the court system, they understand the legal system, they understand all this stuff. I'm nowhere in any of the discovery. The only time my name is brought up in court is from Pops and his lawyers. There's nothing that says I had anything to do with it outside of Sheriff Seal protecting uh, Habiba in that one interview. But yet people keep perpetuating this, this, this phenomenon that keeps being told to people by other people over and over again. Um, my, my only involvement in the entire situation is I supported people I grew up with. You know, I had a, I had a, I had a deal breaker for me. Like I said to my father, like I was willing to go the extra mile, but child molestation was my, my, uh, my, uh, my breaking point. Right? Talk to us about that, brother. When you heard the news that this was going on, when you first heard the news, 
Where were you? And what, oh, no, what no, 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 no. I, I knew about it in the 80s. Oh. Oh, yeah. Man. I just didn't know about I don't know what happened in Edenton, Georgia. But I knew what I was happening in the 80s while I was young and what I lived through with my own father. Right. But my understanding of what child molestation was, was not quite what everybody else's understanding of child molestation, molestation was. Right. You know, you know how it was in the 80s. We didn't even discuss child molestation. That wasn't even a topic right. in this country. That wasn't even a major thing. You had songs. You had one of the biggest songs. One of my favorite songs in the 80s was a song. She's only 16 years old. <laughs> Leave her alone. Like they had hit records that was made about, you know, pedophilia act that we didn't even realize was hit was was pedophilia so it wasn't a discussion of all that i just knew that he was sleeping with my 14 year old girlfriend wow i didn't register it anything greater than that right and so it was a very unusual feeling but it wasn't something that you can pinpoint you know it sounds like almost unbelievable to say but i grew up there born and raised right so i knew what i knew from there and you were obedient. You didn't trust the white man. I don't even think 911 was even invented at the time, right? You yeah. had to dial full the actual phone number to get to the police. We didn't talk to the police. Right. We didn't talk to white people. We didn't talk to law we enforcement. We were scared of them. Anybody. We were, we actually considered them kind of and that was the dunya. Right. So, and who, who, who you speak to you speak to people within right. the organization. We spoke to each other. We talked to our peers. And it's like the blind leading the blind. Right. It wasn't until at a certain point in the organization, my mother would sit me down and say, hey, if anybody ever touches you this way or would anybody ever do this? That became a topic later on. And that's when I began to see things a little bit different. And that was really when I began to be like, I'm out of this place. You know, so let me ask you, Chuck, uncomfortable. Um, when you see people fighting for him to this day, like, yes. I'm going to tell you, like, Sister Sakina, she's a diehard fan for Pops. Who's man. that? Um, Sister Sakina. She's, she's been on the land for a while. I don't think you know her. And she's a diehard fan. I mean, she loved your father. She go all out for him. She's still fighting till this day. When you see people standing up fighting, saying that this is not true, what do you say to that? Because they they wasn't. I, I they say was this. Not, never around. Or I they say didn't this. See how, do they, how do they know it's not true? Hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that's the point. Like it's it's there's a value that people put on their existence in his life. That's just not realistic, right? Like he, you know, most sociopaths and my father's a sociopath, right? Know how to play roles for people. You ever notice when you talk, when they talk to Jeffrey Dahmer's mom, she goes, he was so sweet. He was yes. so innocent. Or they talk to serial killers, girlfriends or high school. Yeah. Oh, they were we so didn't sweet. know he could do that. They were so sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's they know right. how to play, play to, to, the, to the audience. See, he didn't wear a mask for me. So you can't, Sakina can't tell me what I witnessed. Mm, okay. She can tell me what she witnessed or what she might've been present of, but I know what I saw. I know what me and that man discussed. I know the videotapes I discovered in his house that had things on it, sex with boys and girls. I know what I saw. I know what I witnessed him rape, when he raping a girl. I didn't know what the word rape mean until I left the community, you know, <laughs> went to school, learned things, went through, and I realized that was rape, right? So actually she was like fighting them off or, or you saying like statutory rape? I'm saying she was not seeming like she was happy. Okay. She was crying, she was screaming, she was upset afterwards, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I know what I saw. Again, I don't know what happened on, in Edenton. I know what people told me happened in Edenton. Brother, I want to salute you for at least coming on. I know you told this story many times, but I want to salute you, brother, for at least coming on and, and still having um, the power to build on this right here. No, I haven't told this story too many times. Yes, yes. So um, I'll be honest with you, Avin. Like, the first time I told it was last night in a public forum, right? Um, but I appreciate it. But, brother, like, honestly, I tell people all the time, like, one of my biggest nightmares in my life is that I did not, in the, in the 80s, know that I could step up and stop this man from being the monster he is right because if I if I knew what what my powers was and my abilities were I would have went to the police but I didn't know all I know was what I was told and I walked up to him and said why'd you do that to her and he said oh she grabbed my dick so I let the letter have it mm. now I, I'm 
you know, 15 years old, so whatever, at the time. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess that's what you do when somebody grabs a dick. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not aware. That's the guy that taught me a lot of things. This is the man that I lived with. This is my father. I had a real father-son relationship. Not a leader, you know, pupil. I, he didn't speak to me like my royal, te like my leader. He talked to me like a regular father. Like I'd sit at the breakfast table with him in the morning and eat cereal. And so I had a completely different relationship with him. So when he said, this is what this, I go, okay. Something inside of you is not comfortable with it, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And at Let the end of the day, that's the reality. So she can say whatever she wants. But she can't tell me what I saw. You have a younger brother. Who who would you say is your youngest brother? A the younger youngest, brother? The youngest one now. I honestly don't consider all his children my brothers and sisters. Okay, I'm talking about Prince York. Prince York looked just like him. We can't take that from him. Uh, what is your Who's opinion that? of Prince York? Because he still fights for him to this day. Yeah. Prince York is like my father. Tell me what, what, which one is this. it? Which one is that? Ramesses. Oh, yes, brother Ramesses. I mean, he's mentally ill, man. Like his father. Like he's he's <laughs> psychologically. He definitely unstable. has some mental issues. That's 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 just a fact. And the reality of situations, I like again, he was in Houston, Texas, way far away from that. Like nobody built people visited him. I didn't even really know the, his existence until you know I got very close to his sister from my dad, uh, Hadessa, and she would say, hey, Ramesses is trying to do things in Houston, Texas, and this is in the last five or six years, and I'm like, who's that? He's like, oh, that's this kid, this, this, and that, I mean, and at that point, I entertained him. Um, I tried to build a relationship with him, and he goes from hot to cold, and I just was yeah. like, I'm cool yeah, with knowing you at that point, but I, I don't think Pops paid him any attention. Yeah, and no, I think that that's the problem that people people have a hard time understanding because they have his DNA does not mean that he treated them like children. And even if he did, he might have did it for six months. Eight, whenever his their parents might have been in his favor, he'll tolerate them and then he'll move past them. Like right. but, so those are part of the later years of children that he produced. And so I don't know a lot of those later year kids. So I'm not going to knock them, but I, if 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 if, it, if you were born past the, if, if you were, you know, very young in the late 80s or, you know, 90, I'm, I don't know who you are unless we've met in the recent years. I might have met a couple of them, but I really don't know too much about those guys. I know that when I when he when he went hot and cold on me, I reached out to a sister and she said he, that he's unstable. And I was like, all right, cool. And I'll leave that alone because I know my dad has mental illness. And so it transfers into a flippy, you know, I know I have a form of mental illness. You know, I know it comes into, you know, people, everybody's not schizophrenic, but some people have what they have. Bipolar. At the end of the day, like. Disorder. Yeah, it's some kind of a disorder. So I don't really, I don't really know him that well. I entertained him a couple of times. He just, he, one minute he's like, oh, you're my greatest big brother. The next minute he goes crazy. Um, I think a lot of them go hard for him because it's a form of daddy issues. Right. Right, and they want to they want to have that relationship with him, and they want to please him. And right now he's in jail, you know what I'm saying? And they feel like you know some of them also have never accomplished things in life. So it's easy to call yourself Prince York, so you have something to attach yourself to, right? So you can be you can, and and obviously you want to be great, and you want an audience to be great for. So you need to fight for a legacy or make sure you say he's innocent, so you feel important because you didn't go out and do anything with yourself. Mm -hmm. Some of us actually went out and achieved stuff for ourselves and build our own legacy in our own world and our own stuff. And some of us didn't. And right. usually you'll find that the majority of ones that didn't are the ones that go the hardest because they feel like they're entitled to a legacy of something. That man squandered away the entire empire, mm. right? Mismanaged it. And at the end of the day, he'll pump them up like, hey, you know what? If I didn't go to jail in 2002, you would have been a part of a billion dollar empire. Right. Okay, well, pull the tax records and see if you see a billion dollars. Ooh, you know let, me let me bring. I pulled those paperwork out, honey. Yes. Let me bring Leah back because um, I know she got a lot that she want to get off her let chest. Let me tell you. Talk let about the taxes. Go. go ahead, Sister Leah. Let me tell you. So, Uma said how she was paying all the bills in yes. Bushwick. Okay, I got two file cabinets in this house. Don't play with me. So in 2015, if half of the people remember, we started a GoFundMe. 
who pay the taxes in Bushwick. The back taxes owed on that house was over $27,000. Uma turned around and oh, I was stealing money. I didn't need a, a red penny from it. Obviously, I didn't need it if I was able to pay the credit card debt at once. Obviously, I didn't need it. Okay? One thing. So what I did was, I told everyone, I will pay the taxes if you guys donate to us paying back the, the, back, the back taxes on it because they were ready to take the building. It wasn't in foreclosure, but they were ready to take the building. A bunch of people donated, and most of you see from 2015, I still have all these receipts and everybody that donated and for everybody who you know i was stealing the money just just in case if you don't know um what is that gofundme took thirteen thousand dollars of that money okay because they they charge fees too and for anybody that overpaid me after the taxes was paid i sent that money back to them i don't need a penny of nobody's money i got my own money $13,667.62 was PayPal, was um, PayPal, was GoFundMe's fees. And that was paid on 4 20 2015. So for all that, oh, Leah was stealing the money. She's in it for, for the money. There was never one penny ever given to me by anybody. Everybody that know me, I've had my first job at the age of 15. And I've always kept the job because I like my own money. So Why do you think your sister is doing this? Cause she wants the building. Oh, it's all about still fighting for that building. She's still fighting for the building, but let's go there now. Yes. So originally I was living in Georgia and I was in constant communication with my father. He would call me at that time. I was still living in his house in Georgia, what we would call his house because all of his belongings was there. Um, and he was like, we need to get Uma out of the building. Everything he tried failed. And he's like, if I know anybody can do it, I know you can. Do you realize we had to take her to court? Me and Sakina had to hire an attorney to get her evicted out of that building because she refused to leave. I mean, it was to the point where I was ready to give up on it because we had electricity off the whole nine yard cold night. But most people that don't know me know if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So it was going to get executed one way or another. Yeah, we went through a few court days and everything. My whole thing is this. If he don't want you to have the building, why are you fighting for it? If he wants these people, whoever these people are to have it, let them have it. I don't care that it's worth a million dollars. A million dollars really is not a lot of money if you really think about it. You know what I mean? Like, why are you fighting for something that he don't want you to have? And as far as I'm concerned, that so many stuff comes with that building. Like, it's a lot. So why would you fight for it? Who why? has the building now? He, well, I'm not going to say he does. It's in a nonprofit organization's name. Okay. If they're current on their taxes now, I don't know. They are, they seem like they Let me bring this back. out. Let me bring this out because she might try to bring it out now sure. that you are on here talking. Um, When you were younger, mm -hmm. you used to be an exotic dancer. Were you good? I was. Yes, was I was. Good? <laughs> was the people coming to see you? I had celebrities as clients. Let's not go there. Okay. Now, being an exotic dancer, what made you? Now, you're the daughter of the famous you, know, Dr. York. I know, but let me what tell you. What made you say, I want to be an exotic dancer? It used to be this, this, it was this movie on years ago with this girl who was in like, I think she was in like Saved by the Bell. I saw that TV show and was like, dang, I want to be a dancer. And I did. Up until the age of 21, of course, I quit because I was like reality set in. It's time for you to become an adult and do real shit. I mean, mm -hmm. excuse me. But yeah, that's what I wanted to do. But this is the thing with me. Anything I ever set out to do, I do. I accomplish. I move on. You know what I'm saying? She can't say the same. You can say whatever you want to say about me. Like, my life is great. You were also married at the age of 16. I was. I was an emancipated teenager, actually. Did you have any children? I did. Time? My oldest daughter is now 24 years old, and she's actually very successful and doing great. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's nice. Um, what is your um, take on polygyny? What do you polygamy? think about polygyny? Polygamy, polygyny, yes. Hey, if it works for you, why not? I don't mind if I can find a second wife. I'm doing it. Okay? <laughs> right. 
Okay. Like, okay. We're doing it. Okay. We gonna oh, so so night you you with it. Right. It, it? So if another woman wanted to come in to your your marriage right now, you saying you with it? You ain't if got no hangups be, on that. If we can be cool, good friends, hang the whole nine yards, I'm not only gonna be oh, let's just be serious. No, we. I'm a foodie. I like to have fun. We travel out the country too. My youngest Damn. daughter come with me. Like that's the kind of life we live. So yeah, if I find another person to add on to what we already have, why not? Let's you, build, oh let's God, build what we have. Like they don't make I women mean, like you. They don't make a lot like you. Listen, you know? and like I like I mean we 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 like to invest. We invest in crypto. We invest in different things. Like this is just how we live. But like I said, if I can find the right person to add on to what we have, why not? Mm. If my husband want more kids, if he can, why not? Like I don't care. It don't bother me. I guess and see that's the thing. Most people don't understand that my mindset growing up is what I saw. So why would I think that anything different would be wrong? You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, like most people are like, how 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 you think that that's okay? You don't mind sharing your man? My husband know my place and I know mine, so why would I be worried? And you're not insecure. I'm at definitely all. I'm definitely not insecure in case of y'all didn't know. I'm definitely not insecure. And overall, I'm his ride and die. So ain't too many people could replace me. Is there anything else you want to say before we bring um, your brother back in here? Um, Just overall, I just wanted people to know. I saw a lot of people donating to her cash app. Okay, you've been baited and you caught the hook. Okay, you fell right into it. She sat up there, talked about how, oh, I own the house. You don't own your house. I pulled the records on that. You forgot who I am. I don't need nothing from y'all. Then why'd you drop your cash app for these people? First of all, if you have so much, why would you take from people who have less? What does that say about your character? And for all the people sitting up there talking about it's, it's so much more to the story. It is a lot to the story, and I'm sure she's going to come out with more. I'm not going to keep doing this back and forth, back and forth thing. My point's been made. Like I said, she has psychological issues, bipolar disorder. I mean, most of the people, if you took psychology or any of these classes in school, you can pretty much point them out when you see them. Um, she sat up there, you know, and again, dragged her mother as if her mother wasn't there for her. Her mother was there for her. She continuously burned the people who come in her life. How do you keep trying to help somebody who continuously burns you? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And then another thing, she turned around, I think I made a point, but she turned around and said that I never did any research for Pop. Like I said, Go back on his minutes, because I believe now his um, minutes is open for all the people, dirty people who want to read all the, that happened. You can open it now. It's not sealed. But um, you can pull up the records. I was trying to help him. And I was doing a lot of research. Obviously, if I was living in his house, he felt like I was worthy enough to. Okay. Now, um, Uma said um, she was taken out of her home and placed in a foster home. People was trying to get rid of her. Nobody wanted to come and get her. And so when she finally hooked back up with her pops, he was so ecstatic. He was like, oh, where have you been? I mean, I've been looking all over for you. And he was sending her checks every month, like maybe a thousand dollar check. And come to find out the lady that was keeping her started dipping and dabbing in the money. And we, she started off getting a thousand, Next thing you know, the next one comes, she's breaking off 700, then it's going down and down to 300. And then she ultimately got out of there and found her father and he's seen her. And he was like, oh, I've been looking all over for you. If your father is sending you money, it's in your hand. He's giving you cash in your hand. It's not no, oh, I'm gonna send you money or you know, Western Union it or however people did back then. You went on a land, you saw him on your way out, He'll say, hug you, give you, and split money in your hand. That's you. How does she high. end up in the foster care? She called the cops on her mother. Oh, okay. Remember, I went into that story. Right, yeah. She called the cops on her mother, and they told her, foster care? Or you could stay here. She told them, I want to do foster care. 
So cause and effect. Your life is the way it is because of the decisions that you made. Now, did you know that she was also molested or raped? She talked about that. And she says that there was a lot of people on the land that was trying to cover it up. That didn't want to, you know, let the people know what was going on. So this she happened to her on the land? Well. well, I mean, her own brothers and sisters was covering it up. And it was all over money and stuff like that. Yeah, it seems like everything that comes out of her mouth is always something to do with or attached to money. Like, I mean, I don't know about any situation where she was raped, molested, touched. If anybody know her and y'all can see how big her mouth is, what's the chances of that? See, a lot of people, they kill me. Like like this Negro that's here. He don't even know her, don't know nothing about her. He Most go by the name know. of Farrah Muhammad, right? And he says, she's not lying. How do you know she's not lying if you Ooh. don't even know her? She is like, a you master. Her sisters right Hold here. on. She is a master manipulator. Mm. Take that how you want to. Yeah, y'all hear that. All right. Is there anything else you want to say before we bring back on Brother Jacob? No, you can bring him on. Jacob, um, we back to you, brother. Hey, what's going and, on? Um, Chuck Morgan, come on in, brother, and ask your question. I need you to come in, bro. You know, I'll say this much. A lot of people be like, I don't, you know, me and her, me and her don't, you know, we never really grew up together. But I will say this. I don't know too much of her life now. But me and her have the same nature, mother and father, grandparents, everybody know how that trickles into DNA. I know what she's capable of. So what she does is the negative aspect of things. I know what I would do in the worst ways when I'm trying to get somebody back. That's how she thinks about things. Only she attaches emotions to everything that she does. So when you talk about, you know, People are like, oh, well, how you know? I I know a lot of what she's capable of. Oh, believe me, I'm capable of it too. But I choose the positive, not the negative. She chooses the negative. And everything, everybody's always, she's the victim in every situation. And it's sad that peace people listen to it don't hear that she's the victim in every story. Like, what happened good in your life? What? Here's a, here's a key question, and it's a key question for half of these people in here, too. If your obituary is not going to say something great, do something with your life starting today. And that's going to be the story for her. She hasn't done anything in her life. She hasn't finished high school. She don't have a GED, never been to college. I mean, the list can go on. So you are one of those type of people who sit up there and you like to throw stuff to ruin what everything good that other people have going on for themselves. That's just what she does. She see something great in your life, she'll come in there and next thing you know, everything just start going sour. It'll turn to rust. Because that's she was just the type a, she of She was on model at one time though, right? She was on what? She was a model. Failed, next. <laughs> I mean, oh. that's why I said like, people are not ready for my truth. People are not ready for how my tongue is just, it is what it is. Like, I'm gonna be honest about it. Like Some people is, will look at you and say, damn. Why do you hate your little sister so it's much? It's not hate. <laughs> it's the truth. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, if you understand her, you'll understand where I'm coming from. It's not hate, by far. I, I, I will say this. Oh, excuse for a second, little. I, Go ahead, I, Leah, I won't say that she hates her sister. I think that there's a group of us just tired of it. We're frustrated with it. We've tried to stay quiet. We've tried to move away yeah. from it. And then you have these other guys that are just in there milking this thing. She's the center of attention. And I'm gonna be honest, right. no disrespect to her. And I don't wanna yeah. invalidate. I don't know about the molestation and I don't know about the rape that she speaks of. But now all of a sudden there's an entire cover up on the land and there's a giant conspiracy to attack her, but none of it is her father. Hmm. Her father always miraculously is just there for her, is sending her mysterious money, hugging her, but yet he owns the land, he owns the community, he is her father, he has a cell phone. He's apparently a wealthy guy, so he can make a phone call. When you were on Vanderbilt at Christmas and I bought you that doll that you said, I bought you the Barbie doll, where was the Christmas gift from your father? If I could be there at that house, why couldn't your father be at that house? So I think that she's, she's, in, she's created a Cinderella story around her dad because it's a form of a deflection 
and and also a form of um a form of daddy issues to an extent right. and again yesterday when, when i was speaking and i said well, he's a he's a he's a child molester well, aren't you a child molester if i was a child molester does that stop him from being one like again i think that the problem is if you're on a land your brothers is covering up your molestation by a mysterious person but your father isn't mm. you're on his land you get kicked out of a property by his followers but he didn't authorize this also e- i want to everything I wanna... so i think leah's tired i th- i think a lot of people are tired yes and we're just not going to let these people keep milking this community of conscious people or even the nuwabian fools out there that still believes this stuff for money opportunities and everything else by painting pictures that are incorrect right and i want to say something else so i'm a, i'm a cover two bases one of them is the buttercup lounge and another one is on my niece bring me back to the buttercup lounge in case i get lost she turned around and said that my older sister who was so jealous of her kicked her off the land and had a had a daughter who was sick only she was faking it so that she can get money from our father that's some low down shit okay first of all everybody knows that her daughter is sick her daughter needed a transplant they ain't get, listen as expensive as transplants are they ain't opening your body just to give you a transplant for no reason okay so for you to go in that way that was real wrong real wrong and first of all that shows the type of person to us that you you go that low to be attacking your own nieces and nephews to try to make a point or to try to get money but that was wrong now the buttercup lounge that she was talking about in New York she was with her child's father it was a bunch of us in the restaurant Jacob was there too um it was a birthday party it was like the march pisces we was like oh yeah it's a pisces thing we just going you know all have fun go out we called a bunch of our siblings at that point i wasn't even living in new york but i was just there visiting um we got together went to the buttercup lounge you figure she had to be about 17 18 years old that discussion had nothing to do with our father we all had a good time drinking drinks was going around food was going around finger food was going around everybody was having a good time now one discussion came up about our father so for us to everybody sitting around here trying to it was cakes going around the table no gossip Everybody had a good time until the end that everybody had a $700. I mean, it was a $700 bill and Jacob came through for that one. Let's be for real. You left because you ain't pay your part of the tab, but next. I, again, I, I think, like, again, I didn't, I, I remember the Buttercup lines when I looked at the pictures, but again, everything is a conspiracy. Everything makes her father look, our uh, pops look like a, like a victim of this giant conspiracy she's dating one of his followers who she produced mm. a child with she's living off of that conscious community crew of nawabians who feed into that and it's okay to attack me it's okay to attack everybody else because that's what gives her what she wants i don't know her i don't know that she was being a model i remember ernest was pretending to be a model manager and he was taking pictures of her when she was under age but that's the same earnest that preyed on her elder sister and was dating this our sister before that and giving her money inappropriately and grooming her the pimp. Mm. Um but I I remember her from my knowledge being a sex worker at one point, right? And you know, that was in recent years, right? I saw stuff on social media, I saw stuff about her being a sex worker, and that's why I I, I you know, unfollowed her on social media because I never want to see my sisters in you know, in 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 compromise and nephews nieces they start they start putting their butts up I'm unfollowing them, right? Now you so, said a sex worker. You used to be a sex worker. No, no. I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm oh, no. used to be a sex worker. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I mean, Leia, I guess I just found out Leah was a dancer, but I'm here used to be a sex worker. And it wasn't. Um, a, it, so she it, dealt with. And no body parts was for sale. Get that straight. Well, I don't know if I'm here sold. A sex worker is a very unique word that I don't think. I'm here, I mean, strippers are considered sex workers too, but I don't know if I'm here was selling her body parts, but I heard, you know, I knew that she was a dominatrix, right? Um, so I knew that about her, and and these are things that I know, and that that's that again goes back to the psychology of a person that feels no power in their life, mm. and it goes back to all of it, you know, and her dominance of men, you know, is kind of projecting when it comes to her father. Obviously, I went to Columbia, um, so I get it. 
I don't take it personal, but I, what, I, what I refuse to do is continually watch people perpetuate this false narrative as if there's this great hate or this so anger or nothing. This, I don't have one anger. My father and myself communicate. So I don't have a problem. There's no problem between us per se. It's not a When the last problem. time you would say you spoke to your father? The last time I answered him? Yes. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to upset the, the, the other, the chickadees. <laughs> All right. right? Because yes. they get upset because he doesn't acknowledge them. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just if, you know we're fine as long as he doesn't start talking rich. Starts talking about. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I said that. I'm gonna ask you this because this is but what sooner, I believe too. Maybe you thought. can clear it up. Yeah. Maybe you can clear this up. Mm -hmm. Um, when your father was facing the judge, a lot mm -hmm. of people would say, "Look at him. He's under the influence of something. They poisoned him, or they hit him with a shot." And when I looked at the video, I was. I was also saying, damn, yeah, he don't look right. He damn sure look like he's being drugged. How much scared, truth right? is that, brother? He was scared. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, he was scared. He, one thing, his biggest, one of his biggest pet peeves, one of his biggest, like, traumatic experiences, jail. It's, I remember being very young, right, at 709. You know, my mother's sitting there, my father's sitting there. This is when he got caught up with the passport fraud issues. Remember? He had the passport for her. And I remember him sitting across from her because the way they used to do, used to be this living room area, like this little dining area. And there was a long table in between. My mother sat on one side, he sat on the other. And the other sisters sat, of the, the, the six and 709 sat around that area, right? And I remember sitting there very young and he got caught up in that. And he was, he began to cry. I don't want to go back to jail. I don't want to deal with this. I can't go back to jail. I can't go back to jail. And I remember my mother looking at him and saying, your son is watching you. Get it together. He has a weakness when it comes to jail. What that is, he's over the years told me he dealt with being raped in jail. He dealt with traumatic experience. When he was younger, I don't know. So you're dealing with a guy that was fearful. And so he was sitting in there the way he was, you know, allocuting to a crime he committed. Right? <laughs> Acting very humble. From you got a guy saying. in the chat room who goes by the name of the Wabigan Facts, mm -hmm. and it says, and he's saying, Jacob, stop lying. So he's in the he's in the he's in the um the Nuwabian. Okay, in, so the Nuwabian Nuwabian Facts is not a person. Okay, Nuwabian Facts is a page. If you want to call yes. me a liar, show your face. Mm. There you go. I always say that. Come Feel in, free. and Prove then it. you're gonna have to validate who you are. Because right. mm. I can validate who I am because I have images you don't have. I have videos you don't have. I have communicate you don't have. I mm. have DNA you don't have. Mm. I have stories you don't have. I have facts you don't have. My That's stuff right. is backed by documents. Now, yeah. now, Jacob, all that information you got, are you planning on doing a documentary nope. sometime in the future? No? Nope. There's one being done now. I, I told him no. I told that I tell everybody no. I have no desire you, to do a documentary. Now you know I'm not saying it's about money, but you know that's worth a lot of money what you got, bro. I've been offered the movie. I've been offered the documentary. See? I've said no. Damn. Hey, let's hear from my brother, um, Chuck Morgan. He's in the building. Chuck, do you have any questions, brother? <clears throat> I'm just going to make this real brief, and then I am honored to be on the platform with two of my favorite your family members. Yes, thank you, brother. <laughs> And I think this is really good that we set this thing up. So my question is real simple, and I'm a bit right out of here because it is their time. Um, Leah or Jacob, could, could, I know the answer, but for those that are watching that this lie has gone on for decade after decade, could you speak the truth regarding his ancestry? Uh, Sudan. Mm, good question. Was it Boston? Was it Ghana? Is he a Liberian diplomat? That is my question. I know the answer, but I would like for the family to address it. And that is all I need to hear. Okay. So here's here's the psychology behind it. I'm gonna take this one, Leah, because I know you've okay. done a genealogy and you can back it up with paperwork. <laughs> I'm gonna back it up with just a psychology, right? And the psychology is real simple. You know, David Piper York is his father. He is not Sudanese. He's not Liberian. He's not Ghanaian. David Piper York is his father, Mary, you know, who became uh, Piper's uh, wife, who he called his mother Fatima, is his mother. Um, there's no ancestry. Now, again, if it's distant, it's distant, right? 
there's some cool not- ancestry within America. The, the Yorks of America are very interesting. But there's no direct ancestry to Sudan outside of the fact that he married into the Sanosi family and had two kids there. And my sister Fatima married into a Sudanese and I had had a daughter there. Other than that, there's no ancestries to the Mahdi or anything else. I can take it a bit further. He was born in Boston, Massachusetts, 1945. He claims that David Piper and his mother were first cousins. They were not first cousins. Now, how do I know that? DNA. What I did was I tested his half sibling, who is David Piper's daughter, which means she's not the child of my grandmother, Mary York. And another family member of just Mary York tested, who's very close, which means that them two would share DNA matches and they don't, zero, zero. They were not first cousins. So all of that, that the only reason why we share the same DNA, they were not first cousins, they don't share the same DNA. And David Piper is his biological father, or else my half aunt, who is David Piper's daughter, would not be coming up as a half aunt to me. Well, I want to say the the reason why I'm doing this, man, is maybe um, I could help in some way of maybe healing some of the pain that's been going on between you, my sister, because I know you've been holding this all in for years. And like with me, let me tell you with me, like when I hold a lot of pain in, I end up snapping on the people that I love so much and it's and they don't deserve that. Mm-mm. And so I want to I want to say to you, no. sister, I don't know how you my feel. like I and I said this early on. My life is peaceful. I live I live in a you know a mm-hmm. pretty quiet area, small town. This didn't start coming up until my phone started going off. Like I said, I I block her from everything. She can't see me. I care not to see what's going on in her life, and I keep it that way for a reason. As soon as I see possible, I go right in there and block her. So. This anger is because she's turning around and I read a lot of the feeds of people dragging my mother. Half of the people don't know my mother. My mother has taken so many people into our house and she did not deserve it. So if she's taking so many people into her house, how is it that her daughter wound up in foster care system? Y'all should have been asking that. So the reality of it is, it was more of the feed from that guy's, whoever he is, it was more of the feed from his post of him having her that pissed me off more than anything. And anybody who has love for their mother would feel disrespected. Oh, believe me, like I said, I was far from an innocent child. I probably gave my mother more hell than any of her kids. Yes, I was definitely in the street because my mother had two jobs and went to school full time. So that was a free for all for me. Of course, I was gonna be out there doing whatever I wanted to do. Would so, you say that this show brings you closure? To what? to maybe you know your sister because you're able to come out now in the public have you ever done this before like came out on a show in the public talking about the talking about her no this was only brought up because of what she did i've never felt the need to everybody that knows me personally knows my story like there is no skeletons everybody know me you know i'm transparent with everything i'm just gonna say it like it is so everybody like, oh, even in the in comments, like I can see the hate. No, you don't know me, so you don't know how I talk. Right. I I speak, if you know my eyes, then you'll see that that's how I am. I mean, I'm, you sound yes, like I got gestures. You said yeah, I sound like my mother. She has a very strong personality like that. Yeah. Yes, and that's just how I am. So people like, oh, I'm pissed off at her. No, I'm past it. I'm dead with it. It's over for me. Like. Over the years, like I said, we haven't spoken to each other in over 10 years. My life is good. I'm good over here. Real good. What were y'all like growing up? Like you and her as young, like, you know, because I'm quite sure you being an older sister, you you had time to take care of her, change her diapers and stuff like that. Keep in mind that we lived in a community. We didn't even live in the same house. Oh. See, we are two different age groups, which means that I lived with people in my age group, she lived with people in her age group. Would it be fair to say, I think that's probably where your father failed at? Instead of raising y'all together, 
so that y'all can get to love and know each other. Yeah. But because he raised y'all separate yeah. and it brought about this strife, like y'all don't, y'all no, really don't because, know each other. But hold on. I can't even say that because there's other siblings who have the same mother, same father, and they have a close relationship. So I can't even turn around and say that that's what the cause of it is. It's, it, it's not. I mean, if I'm sitting up here comparing my relationship to the other siblings who have the same mother, same father with him, then no, I can't I can't say that that's a fair assessment. Have you ever watched the House of Consciousness before? No. Sarnetta, my, my show I'm talking about. Oh yes, I have, sorry. So <laughs> you know where I'm going with this next question. <laughs> hey, you but... know the House of Consciousness don't suck around no questions. Have your father or have you heard of anything of your father? And I'm gonna ask Jacob. Because Jacob, he keeps it all the way 100. Have he ever molested any of his own children? Have you heard of anything like that? I've heard the rumors, mm. but I'm the type of person, I'm going to go ask that person. Right. And I asked the person, and they said, no, nothing ever happened to them. He's never done anything to them. That's How about you, Jacob? Based off the one person that I that people were saying stories about. Right. How about you, Jacob? No. Okay. No. I've good. never seen him. I've never seen I mean, him do it. Yeah. Not. I okay. mean, I've heard of things that he's done that's inappropriate, but then you'll have people question whether it's appropriate or inappropriate based on their their value system. But as it pertains to, you know, watching your twelve year old son having a grown woman give him oral sex while you watch. Some people would find that to be, well, maybe that's his rite of passage as a father. Some people would look at that as being inappropriate. I find that to be inappropriate. But some people may think that's normal, right? Have you been keeping up with the um, polite situation in the case that polite going on right now? Me? Personally, oh. mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't know who he was. Um, oh, wow. You ain't no polite? No, I don't know who he is. Oh, I'm okay. told who he was, and when people tell me, I go, okay, well, I, again, I, my brother, I don't entertain. Right, right. You're doing your own thing out there. I don't really entertain subcultures very often, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, I I see these people talk, you know, the Omar Johnsons or these guys, and I just think they're silly. And so a lot of times I just disregard most of them. Um, I'm not surprised that he's a child molester himself or something, because he, if anybody that defends my father you know, to the T, obviously share some of the values that he has, right? Mm. And for a person that never met him or people who never met him or whatever it is, for him to go as hard as he did, I, I find it doesn't surprise me that he was accused, that Ramesses, like all these guys are accused of, well, I, the Ramesses accused of, like, if you are part of a group of people that really, 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 I mean, Nambla supports my father. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? You get my point now, like, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the National Organization, man, boy, love us, associated supports my father that's the point like it's like-minded people so it doesn't surprise me i think that again one of my biggest issues with a lot of the later on people that are in my father's life which is part of this nuabian thing is the fact that a lot of them are kind of leeches to me to that to him they insulate him in his in his psychological illness right and so they are creating the negative. I think a lot of them are drawn to the fact that he's been accused of all this stuff. Mm. I think they have deep rooted issues and they need to justify. It's like, like all the crazy people that supported Donald Trump because they knew he was just as bad as them and they all start going to jail for the crazy shit. It's the same thing with a lot of these later on people. These people that just, just surround my dad and perpetuate all the, all the sickness and all of that. They, to me, I believe if this Sakina person is just Garhart, she might be, she might be, she might have skeletons in her closet too. You understand? Yeah, That's Jacob, what I believe. Yeah, like, you, you can't real... stand there. You cannot be close to my father and not see it. Yeah, you're it's a real dude, difficult. Jacob. I like you and I like the sister Leah, man. Y'all some y'all real people. Y'all keep it a hundred all the way. And that's what I see from both of y'all. Jacob, let me ask you this. I was watching the show that you did with Taharka a little bit and he just um, rudely kicked you out and got rid of you. But oh, I think you said something, and correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. You said something about your father was asking you for a million dollars. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, two million. Oh, two million for what? Mm -hmm. Wow, what was that all about? When um, I guess yeah. it's in the late '90s at some point. He had gathered all his kids, and he came to New York or somewhere and had all of them get together. 
You remember that? Yeah. He had got all his kids together and he was talking to them. And then, you know, like I talked to Zaynab today and she was like, yeah, he asked me for money too. So I saw all his kids to raise money for him. I guess he was in the middle of that battle with Sheriff Seals and and uh, I didn't show up to it, you know, um, but he had, I guess, gathered them all at a restaurant and started having one of those speeches about his greatness, which meant he was probably doing a fundraiser with them and trying to figure out who had money. Because, you know, he built his entire empire on talking women out of money, you know? The, the entire mosque was, was funded by, originally by my mother's mother giving them the money, you know? And he took advantage of a lot of the sisters in the mosque, getting their life insurance, all that stuff. So he was pretty much an interesting kind of scammer guy. Um, so I think he was trying to get to his kids and I didn't show up because I just fall, I just, I know him, you know? So it just wasn't that big of a deal to me. And then he called in my office and asked me, why didn't I go? I was like, I'm not going with that. And he was like, you know, so he, I was, we talked for about 30 minutes. And he was just like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to give me 20, I'm trying to see if you can give me $2 million. And I thought he was joking. So I just brushed it off. Brushed it off as most people would. Right. I was like, hey, yeah, whatever, man. I ain't giving you shit. You know, we talk like that. That's how our relationship is. So we laughed and joked and we hung, I hung up. And then when I got to the land that one time, when I went to see him, he bought it up again. And that's when I realized, you know, he's bad with money. So I was like, yeah, this guy probably screwed up all his money. I'm not giving this guy a penny. You know what I'm saying? Cause he's never given me a penny ever. No, what I mean by that is like, he wouldn't have given me $2 million, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not giving him anything. Wasn't but, there a time yeah. when you were younger, when you was just starting to start off, mm -hmm. that you also went to him and asked him to help you like for maybe $100,000 or two hundred to help you start your career? because you was promoting like Biggie and, and Lil' Kim and these people. Did you try to also get money and he turned you down? No, that never oh, happened. So that's not true, so okay. My, my, my working with my career and Biggie and Lil' Kim and stuff was in 1994, 1995. I was out of the mosque. I had stopped speaking to him in 91. Mm. So that's a fictional statement that he creates and tells people. Right, it's he, Atlantic financed the Lil Kim situation. There's no, you know, Arista financed the Biggie situation. Like they got billions of dollars, they don't need Malachi York's money. Um, I, I interned for my cousin Kidar, right at the time, who was doing very well, and mm -hmm. and Daddyo, and Daddyo is the one that cut the demos for Junior Mafia in his studio free of charge for me. Um, and we shopped it around, and, and Atlantic gave us a deal. Mm. It had nothing to do with money. Like it was literally, and at the time I had made my own money producing events and doing, you know, marketing, which you, I can pull flyers up and I had the hip hop union at the time. You can pull up billboard articles. This is all bigger than what he's ever. He's never done anything successful in music. All his plaques are fake. I actually have real plaques. You know what I mean? I got real awards. Like I, I don't even entertain silliness. Cause you know, you know, it's funny how you can just pull things up on the RIAA site. You can pull things up. Yeah, you can. Are you still in the business? Yeah, it's a business. Like you, it's like when there's, a, there's an entire discovery that says Jacob has nothing to do with the case. People say, yeah, something to do with the case. You know, you just gotta let people believe what they need, need to believe. But no, I've never gone to that man and said, I need a hundred thousand dollars for anything. By the way, in the community, you didn't go to him. You went to my mom. For money. He went to my mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I knew my mom would have told me no. She was like the bookkeeper. Yeah, she was the money. So right. he, you, he went to her and got allowance, if you really want to know. Right. So in the community, I would have never thought to go to him for money. I never asked him for money. I would go to her and she would give me my weekly allowance. Or I would go to my grandmother and my grandmother would be like, give me the money. I'm going to show you how to, you know, how to debut it up. Dad was never really the money guy. So that's just a false statement. What was that? What would that weekly allowance look like? Um, my grandmother made it. My mother took it down to eleven dollars and fifty cents, but it was seven hundred. Eleven thousand? Oh man! Eleven? No, no, eleven dollars and fifty cents. Oh, oh, eleven dollars. <laughs> it was seven hundred. It was. My father told her to give me. Thought it should be twenty five hundred. My mm. mother said. Set, my mother. My grandmother said seven hundred, and my mother gave me eleven dollars and fifty cents, and said if I can get through that, you know, through a week with that, she might up it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't know my dad told her to give me 2,500. That's what my dad told me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But my grandmother was like, 700 is enough because you gotta do groceries. My mother was like, groceries? You got a grocery store. Like you can go there and just sign out. And I would go and sign out stuff. I would go to the clothing store and sign stuff out. So I didn't really need groceries. So it was like, what does he need it for? Like we own the building. So it was a little silly, but it was a, my mother wanted, my grandmother wanted, my mother wanted to teach me like responsibility. But my dad um, was are, never like. Are y'all willing to um, entertain a few questions from the people or no? I am. What about you? Um, I see. Jacob? I see a lot of people saying that our family's dysfunctional. Name As long, one yes, black family yes, or that, white yes, family that's not dysfunctional. Facts. It's dysfunctional. It's dysfunctional. Yes, that's a dysfunctional family. Mm -hmm. 
but it has its pockets of normality. I was about to say, because we do unit, get together dysfunctional. and we have a good time. I mean, too, you got so. one guy that produced 98 children. Like, it's dysfunctional. Right. <laughs> do you understand? All right, family, this is your chance now. Um, you have an opportunity to talk to Jacob and Leah. Oh, man, this is going to be great. Remember, I always say respect my guests. If you don't, I cut you off. Um, all they got to do is say, yo, let's get rid of that caller, next caller, and you got to get out of here. You out of here. So um, let's call it in. This is your chance to be on something powerful and historical, and you can always... When you grow, when you, when your kids grow up, come back to this video and say, "Yo, I spoke to Jacob. <laughs> I spoke to Leah." So yeah, call it in, man. King Simon, call it in, brother. Hey, Jacob, do you know a brother by the name of King Simon? Yeah, that's my brother. That's a good guy, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good All guy. Right. I was yeah. gonna say also. She kept saying how King Simon is her spiritual uncle. Yeah. King, si hold on, let me fix that real quick. Yeah. You know, because it was so much that I needed to just unload, but that's one of them. So King Simon and my mother are close, as my mother is with a lot of people from Ansar days. She stayed in touch with a lot of people because, like I said, my mother is a good person. My mother do stuff for people that I gotta stop her and be like, "All right, you're doing too much." Like that's just me. But. For her to turn around and be like, he was her spiritual uncle. First of all, she waited two years to find him and tell him what happened to her. So if he was your spiritual uncle, would he not be on speed dial for you to tell him the same night? Hmm. Yeah. All right. Peace right. and Black Power Peace family. What's your name and where you call from? Let's do it. Bring him in. Yes. Peace and Black Power. I'm Maggie from the Bronx, Yankee Stadium. Okay. Do you have a question? Yes. First, I want to say it's a month family and also I'm just curious to know um, how did um, Polite come in the picture how was it that he's on, on he's on all these videos like live TV talking about he shot somebody in the Bush building but nobody knows now how, uh, how did Polite come into the picture that's question. a good Thank question you. good question Thank you. how, how Thank I you. know that he came in the picture was through Sakina yeah, now you I, know what she's saying is how did Polite get in here now all of a sudden nobody knows who Polite is. He shot one of Dr. York's sons. I mean, like, how nobody knows this? Go ahead, sister. It's, I just feel like, like I said in the beginning, we brought a lot of people in not knowing their history. And always, whenever somebody needed a place to stay, it was usually like, okay, you're in Brooklyn? Yeah, go to the Brooklyn tab. Okay, you in Atlanta? Go to the Atlanta tab. Like, that's just how it was. So how he got in, in, first of all, there's three circles, and let me say that. You got the inner, inner circle. That's people who was close to him. They knew everything going on. Then you got the middle circle. Those are the people who know, but not too much. You know, the inner circle, you get to walk to his house freely. You get to call him, no questions asked. The middle circle, you can come visit the land every Wednesday. You know, you might not know everything going on, you know, you might be just however you might be running a tab that's the middle circle then you got the outer outer circle those are people that are just clueless they don't even know anything that's really going on those are the people sitting up there talking about something it was so innocent y'all don't know half of what's going on mm. the outer outer circle are people who did not to know too much of anything all you did was read a book you might come to class here and there but you really didn't know what the inner work of the circle really was Yes, um, I'm still curious on. Let me let me answer a question for you. Just yes, get aware. Ahead. I am out of the community as of ninety. So I all the stuff that goes out after that, I have no idea who those people are. Yes. I am an I'm... Astar, Nubian Islamic Hebrew, uh Nubian Nation guy. <laughs> you know, I'm that guy. I am I have nothing to do with the uh, uh Edenton, Georgia. I've been there one time. Uh I have no idea what goes on when everything went to Nuwabian nations and that whole silliness, I know no idea of that. I know, I remember being upstate New York when we started writing this Nubic language, which was just a dialect that we created as kids and he turned into something special. So I knew he had a new con coming, but that 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 comes after me. I don't know anything about the Nuwabian nation at all, to be honest. So I, I, you know, so when people ask me who these guys are, I legitimately don't know who they are. And, but again, 
the I will say that these people came on the latter end because kind of around the time I left and then my mother left, you know, a year before that, a lot of left, a bunch of people left. The quality of the organization deteriorated with a lot of the older people leaving because there was mm. a lack of quality control. Yeah. 709 dismantled, structures disappeared, real leaders that mm. ran organizations began to disappear. There was a big civil war around 89, 90 when a lot of the original people parted ways <sighs> with it. Right. So and he was stuck people. with the middle group of people and the outer group of people who were then promoted up. Right. And they and were just drones them that upstate. did whatever he said. And they because he didn't have upstate. total control of the Ansar law community. He didn't have total control of Nubian Islamic Hebrew. There were chapters. There was an organization. 709 had six people. There were people like so there was a there was a there was a structure at one point. Right. right? And then once he took control of that structure and there was that civil war and people kind of went their parted ways, the structure collapsed and you had a whole bunch of people that just really didn't know and you know, it didn't, a lot of the assets wasn't there, taxes wasn't paid, you know, properties that we owned wasn't managed right, food wasn't distributed right to the children, like all types of programs collapsed because he didn't run it. He just was responsible for selling the dream. Mm. There were organizational right. people that ran it. So right. if you're talking about after that, I'm sure every time Dick and Harry that crawled out of an alley crawled into that organization because there was no real check and balance. And mm -hmm. so all these other people just were people that he that probably just hyped his ego up and says you're great and he just made he he just promoted them because of that. So I don't know who these people are. I don't even know which kid he shot. Wow, okay. But I know yeah, one thing. So many. I mm -hmm. know one thing. I'm sure if the kid is if the kid's 30 and under, I really don't know. Do you understand? But I'll tell you one thing, my brother. In not in from from 1970 to 1990 if you shot one of his kids you would have you would have not been walking around go ahead go ahead that's something that would never have been even approved by him because mm -hmm. brothers couldn't touch me they had like it, they would beat him with me noon and they would have to go get permission to beat me they wouldn't have touched me they wouldn't even look my way only uncle yaya and abdu ali could hit me officially no other mm -hmm. brother in the community would breathe near me. They would bow, kiss my hands, or else. That's how it was. Yes. And so the fact that someone was able to shoot one of his kids tells you that he lost total control. Right. Oh, yeah. Man. Because if you breathe near one of his kids, a brother, a brother had the nerve to look my way and get angry at me. And next thing he knew, he was dragged into the streets, kicking and screaming and crying. It would have never happened when the organization was the real organization it was. Because you would have gotten a Good visit point. from the Mujahideen. Right. Good point. And you would have been point. six feet under. And the rest of your family would have been with you. So it tells you what, what it is. He is literally holding on to like control from, uh, in, from the jail. And he doesn't control the people around him. They really control him. Yeah. Right? And he's right. Like holding on. <clears throat> Let me bring on the brother. Real G's, you're in the building. What's your question, brother? What's up, man? Real things in the building. How y'all doing? Um, I don't like to talk to the young lady up here, Dr. York's daughter. How you doing, Miss Lady? I'm doing pretty good in yourself. I'm doing pretty good. Now, you said that when you was growing up, you was Dr. York's oldest daughter? No. one of them? I'm the oldest by my mother. So she said okay. that my mother and my father got together when my mother was 17. So mm -hmm. she's saying that... My mother had her first child at 11 because let's keep in mind, I'm her first child with my mother and father. There's two kids on top of me. We're, my mother has yeah. five kids. We're all three years apart. Mm -hmm. So that whole- Do you still talk to your brothers and sisters? I communicate with older some one. of them. Oh, my oldest, my one of my oldest sister has passed away. May she rest in peace. But my other oldest so sister, brother? I do communicate with her. Oh, that's good, that's good. Now, let me ask you, when it comes to religion and spirituality, what do you worship today and what do you find that's, you know, accessible for you? I deal strictly with my ancestors. I, I'm not, I'm a spiritual person. I've, you know, when it comes to, you know, who do you pray on? I pray on my, I pray to my ancestors because as far as I'm concerned, they created me. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. They still breathe through that's me, good. through my blood, through my energy. Everything that, you know, when I ask for, wow. you know, it's through them. 
It's through that. That's, that's wonderful. They're still part that's of me wonderful. and I'm still that's part of them. Mm-hmm. Now, now, when it comes to community outreach at this point, what are you doing to reach out to the community just to think on behalf of your father and his legacy and what you think positively that you could leave for the community on behalf of your father, despite all the bullshit that he's been you know, through? What could you leave for us? Had you asked me this 10 years ago, my answer would have been different. Today, okay. I look at all of the families that has been torn apart by the community and what he has done. So I have a nonprofit organization that helps to reunite families. That's my way of trying to break this generational curse. Because no matter what you do to people, how you treat people, all of that is karma. So as far as I'm concerned, that's where I am with things. I reunite families, I reunite adoptees. People are looking for people, I make that possible. What's the name, please? Say that again. Tell us the name of her organization. Oh, Birth Family Search. Really? And, and what what city are you guys out of? Where you guys uh, are? You located here in the states? You overseas? Where you guys located? No, I'm in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Oh, I heard of that. Pennsylvania. That's um. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, uh, now I'm, one more question, right? Huh? Where are you? You're a, very, you're a very beautiful young lady. Do you do anything to work out and stay in shape, or you just this is just you? No, I am happily married. When I tell you happily married, I'm in the most happiest and happiest relationship ever in my life. But I heard uh, you invite others to your marriage as well, right? I no, brother, no, that, brother. She did. She was talking about polygyny, like if she was to have another sister out there. That's that's what she's talking about. Oh, she want another sister. Not a man, brother. What are you talking about? Oh, my bad. bad. <laughs> I thought I, that's what I heard. My bad. You're wild, but man. anyway. I don't work oh, out. Let me get back to the subject. I eat out a lot. Uh, she, she, she and I work out. Life every day. I don't work out. Mm-hmm. I eat out mm-hmm. every day and I just have fun in life. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So you can't cook. You want that from your daddy. Oh, my husband life. cooks for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's an excellent cook. I, I know that's right. All right, brother, real G's. Before, before I go, how often do you watch the House of Consciousness and how often will you be watching it? House of Consciousness is on another TV. She I, already said she watched yeah. yeah, we got to It comes up. It comes up. It comes up. I'm a subscriber, so it comes up on my timeline. <laughs> okay, there you go. She's a subscriber. All right, brother Morpheus, you in the building. You up next, my brother. What's happening? Peace, peace, peace. Leah, yeah, what's up? Yo, yo, Yakub, yo, Jacob, what's good, family? That's somebody yo. from the old days. <laughs> you heard the way he said your name? Yeah, exactly. Listen, listen, I froze my ass off many a days on guard duty while walking you guys across the street for the, you know, the Mukmanati. So I know I was there. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. I could, I'm from the old school, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, so I was there, so I know exactly what you're talking about, family. And, and, and it's always a pleasure, man. Uh, uh, I think I saw Jacob last time uh, out here in, uh, uh, in Georgia. We ran into each other, um, 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 you know, uh, maybe, I think it was last year or something like that. But um, um, here's my question real quick, right? Can you do me a favor? Right? Can you let people know um, uh, 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 the good side, because a lot of people tend to think that nothing but negative came out of the Ansar Law community. Good no, question. That's and not we, that's not true at all. That's that's not true. People, there was a negative. There was there was positivity it throughout was a lot the Ansar Law community. Right, right. Like I think that that's the point that that's one of my concerns. And what I tried to do yesterday on the other show was explain, brother, that everybody has to understand, and I think Leah, Leah, Leah kind of brushed over it a little, it's just like, what I'm saying is post Ansar Law community it deteriorated. The quality control that was in the Ansar Law community, you gotta realize, we were vegans, right? We knew martial arts, we were multilingual, we went to we had Broadway plays, we owned a thousand yep. acres of state, we had property in, in Trinidad, we had property in London, Chicago, Philly, Atlanta, Virginia, South Africa, like we were a thriving organization. Right. The kids, every year we had we, we went to school, we had private tutors, we were highly educated. We had our own nurses, we had our own doctors. We were, you know, we martial arts, we learned we had, training. We were taking guns apart at 10, 11 years old and putting them back together. We had teachers come from Morocco to teach us. That's yeah, right. we I had mean, a bunch of, it was a very Arabia, good place. Which is a dialect that a lot of people don't even speak today. 
So again, what yeah. people understand is that it was it was a very good place, and it was. And then when I try to tell people when they say there was a history or a culture of pedophilia, I'm like, that's not true. Right. It was just. Thank like, you, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Real quick, true. that's what I was saying that wasn't because true. I don't well, know real quick, in Edmonton, Georgia, but in in exactly. Asheville, See, me, I wasn't there for that Zawabi and shit. Yeah, there was none of that. That was no. That wasn't a culture of a pedophilia. You got touch. I remember a teacher was accused of touching my sisters and the Mujahideen dragged him out of there. He's kicking his career. And I was one of them. I was one of them. Yes, beat <laughs> him up. You was, there was no culture of molestation in the mosque in, back then. So when that's, people speak, they're that's speaking right. from being six years old, right. two years old, three years old, and not even being in the mix of the, right. of the hierarchy of the business. First of all, of the, the kids didn't even communicate with the adults. That's okay. the point. That's right. The sisters were separated. The brothers were separated. So when people tell these stories of I used to have this happen to me, I'm like, where? There was the, the problem yep. is with an organization like that. You're dealing with the '60s. They're going through the wars and they're going through, you know, uh, 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 you know, they're going through apartheid in America, fighting for rights, the Black Panther movement. You right. know, watching the assassination of black leaders, you know, all of that stuff going to the, I don't know if people remember in Brooklyn, there was the blackouts in the seventies, the riots. So people, they wanted to build a, a utopia for black kids. And they got together with yeah, the Jake, yeah, yeah, Jacob, tell them so. how we had to, Jacob, tell them how we had to take over the buildings. I, tell them I, I how we took over that. Yeah, I, I told them that story yesterday. yesterday. I he told them because that area was controlled by, by Puerto Ricans on one side and yeah. Irish mob on the yeah. other. And Irish. And the yep. Irish on the other. And these brothers were black. I'm talking about 24 hour security CBs, right. AK 47s on the rooftop. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about people had to go in and out of those. Like we were, they were trying to build a utopia for kids. We ate healthy. You know, we, mm -hmm. we I mean, everything that people are talking about today, healthy food, this man, we were doing that back then. Right. Right. Of making our soap, making our shoes, our clothes were produced by us. We would create, we had our own utopia in there. Right. Obviously, there was some. Obviously, there was some. You know, there was some. Uh, and, and you, you know, what, thank you, know, you very did, much. Because some, I, I, <laughs> you know, it, it like, was. Thank you very much. I wanted people to know that part. You know what I'm saying? That was a good because, question, Morpheus. Well, I, I said that. Yes. Good question. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a lot of good yeah, as well. I, 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 it was a lot of good. There was, there was right, more right, good. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, was more yeah, good. I'm gonna jump off, so I'll, let me say this real quick, right? Let me hey, King Simon said you and him used to do security in Bushwick. That's right. That's right. Listen, listen. <laughs> we was there. Like, yeah, listen, I'm 58, so I was there. I, you know, I know I was there. You know what I'm saying? And I just didn't want the narrative, the, the, the narrative, just for people who don't know, just to think that, you know, it was all like, you know what I mean? Crazy. And you know what I'm saying? That all the Nawab being crazy shit. No, I'm a, yeah, I, that's I come from the school of Ansars. Yeah, I'm an Ansars. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So thanks a lot, y'all. Peace, family. The Muslim that used to try to beef with us, and we had to them. But we didn't have beef in the streets, and right. kids were we were respected. And, we and were and respected. This wasn't happening, and it wasn't all like that. Happened way later, right. from my knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? But awesome. we we lived a good life, my brother. And I think that people insult the legacy of the organization by making it feel like it was just a history of pedophilia when yeah. it wasn't yeah. even around in the 70s to even this, to know what, the, what was going on in the 70s. It wasn't even you wasn't around. You gotta understand, black people didn't buy thousand acre lands and, right. and, 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 and grow singers and, and put, I mean, we had baseball fields. We had wine wineries, right? We had all this stuff. Kids, all the kids went up, all the kids from the mosque went to our own private summer summer uh, camp every year. Desde Abar. Every year we went. Right. Right, and, and and we learned how to eat. We, we we studied. We played together. We got to know each other. Like it was not, it was a utopia. Right. Right. And at the end of the day, nothing good doesn't have some bad. But it, I don't right. know what happened post nineteen ninety and what happened in Eaton, Georgia. If it was a cultural molestation there, that's fine. I don't know. I don't think that's okay. But those people can speak to that. But if you talking about what happened from nineteen seventy to to nineteen ninety. I know we went to Morocco, we went to Egypt, you know what I'm saying? We spoke languages, you know, that people didn't speak. I'm talking about kids. We went to private school, we had good education, good food, health care, you know, and, and, and kids thrived within the organization. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, I don't, I have a problem. Y'all also had a roller skate ring? Yeah, we did. King Simon just dropped that. <laughs> and the roller skate ring was one yeah. of them. 
we had a roller skate. That's where the the, the, the big all, the big uh, mosque is now. Yeah. That was where we we did we did our own eat. We put on our own plays. Put on our own music. You know what I'm saying? Like we traveled. We uh, I mean kids ate. Brothers sacrificed. Right. I'm not gonna say that at a certain point my father didn't descend into madness and mess a lot of things up. Which I tried to say. Like there was a point in which that civil war happened where you you lost the purity of what it was and a mm. lot of the old timers kind of left and that kind of started when my father took on two mommy nazis as his wife right and people were like huh and that was khatiba was one of them uh, who has her mother you know who khatiba is right i do right so that was the that was the first and everybody was like wait i remember my mother going nah -uh, she's supposed to marry a sudanese mm. she's supposed to marry a mommy new right and my dad was like oh nobody wants her i'll take her and that's when that started getting strange to a lot of people in the organization who had dedicated their lives to watch their kids go on and be ambassadors and you know and all of that and all the stuff they were meant to be and at some point my dad just reneged mm. why i don't know and I, I do know but i'll say he just reneged and i think at that point is when you had that civil war of people that was like wait when we built this we built this for this and then you had the people that probably other people that hung around with my dad till today that just surrounded him and, and dealt with the cult of personality that he became mm -hmm. and they fought for his belief and it's all about you your jesus on earth mm -hmm. and i think you got that split and that's when you got the nuwabian nation which was kind of like the diet version of what we we're building and probably the discard the discharge of what we were, what we had going on and i consider the nuwabian nation discharge to mm -hmm. that all, community. all right hold on hold all on right, so let's be clear hey. y'all are discharged Family, y'all ain't showing no love in the cash app, but can you throw up, can you thumb up the video? That's free. You can thumb up the video. That's free, family. Let's thumb up that video for your brother. Um, peace and Black Power family. What's your name and where you calling from? Uh, peace out. Uh, this is Michael Down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. How you doing? What's going on, Michael? Good. Uh, I mean, my, this is Michael Boss here. She knows I me. Know I'm on the to a couple of things. I knew it was you. When you said yeah. Mike, I'm like, and then you, when you said Florida, you ain't even yeah. going. I knew it was you. I just didn't want to. Yeah. What's, What's up? up, brother? Yeah, I want, I want to test to. Uh, there you go. That's why I'm calling in. We we went in a visit together back in in uh, 09. We you know when we used to at that time when we were working on Dr. York's case, uh, there was a couple year period where we were going physically to visit him. I basically called in to clear up the polite thing. I can tell you exactly how polite was involved because I was there and give you a hundred percent. Talk to us. All right. This is this is this is what went down. Okay. Polite they come in under the sister Zakina, whose real name is Patricia Lewis. Yes. All right. As Polite moved up the ranks, and all the people saying that Dr. York doesn't know who Polite is, they're incorrect. He's well aware of who Polite is. I want to clarify that. And I have letters to prove it. And mm -hmm. I've been in visits face to face where he verified he knows who Polite is. So I'm going to tell you what happened with the whole thing on Bushwick in 07 and 08. As Polite moved up the rank, and Jacob was completely correct, he's the one, he wanted all the York family out of the Bushwick buildings. This was by Dr. York's mouth. I was sitting there in the visit, and again, I got letters to validate oh, letters it. Too. Yep. Jacob, J Jacob York was completely right. His father was the one who orchestrated. He wanted no biological Yorks in that building. Okay, so Polite was then given the job to run the Bushwick bookstore. He's instructed me, and Polite can ver Polite knows who I am. He can verify it. Doctor York wanted me to go to New York and support that change, which I did. I went there. Oh seven. There's a lot of tension going on. I remember the biological Yorks in the building. You could feel the tension. But Zakina, who's who people know as Patricia Lewis, so we get the right names. She was resisting that transition. So this is where this whole shootout and beef thing escalated from. She did not want to go with the transition or the change. I'm not sticking up for Polite, I ain't sticking up for Zakina, but I'm gonna call it for what it is. Polite does have a connection with that. People are saying that Dr. York doesn't know who he is. They're 100%, he's 100% aware who Polite is. Now after that went down and Polite didn't want to deal with that shit no more. That's when he went to Bedford Avenue and opened up the store over there. And who he opened that store with, who he who he was close with, was Dr. York's brother Obar. They were they were very close. They did business together for a while. 
and they did go, and I believe Obar was the one that got into the visit. I don't know if Polite got in. Polite took a trip with Obar to go visit Dr. York in jail. And I'm not sure if Polite got in on that visit, but I know Obar did. So there is a connection there. They, they resisted, they did not want Polite taking that place over. That's what the war was over. Dr. York, I have letters to validate this, and Polite has plenty of letters from Dr. York. So when people were saying, and I know Leah was talking about earlier, Dr. York would also send letters to people and give names to certain people, uh, you know, that just came into the community while he was incarcerated. That's how some people would get these names, and I know that's how Polite got his name. And I know that's how Polite's mate, his first wife, got the name. So there's a lot of misinformation going on that people don't know, and Jacob's completely, he's completely correct. What you guys fail to understand, and I'm, I was the same position that Lee was saying earlier. This guy will tell you, and I was going there for a couple of years. Yes, we were. This guy will say, yes, this guy will tell you shit. Then when you leave, he'll talk shit about you to somebody else that comes in. It's all about this conquer, divide, divide. controlling people. Yeah. But I basically just wanted to call in to clarify the polite thing. Dr. York is very well aware who polite is. These people saying that, talking shit, they don't they don't have the full history of what's going on. That's not there's no truth to that. He's very well aware of who Brother Polite is. Mike, it is good to hear from you. Thank Find you. me. Hey, Find brother, me, let okay? me ask you a question. Um, why do you think Dr. York wanted all the York family off of the property, out of the building? Why do you think? Was there something going on that he has a plan going on? All right, well, there's another person you gotta factor into this, his sister. Who, her name is Dale York. People know her as Wakia. Okay. Wakia is very close with the sister Patricia Lewis, who's the king. Uh, and, and not not just drawing all this out to get long winded. All this is a money play. The longer York stays in jail, the more it's all about money, control, and property. They, they're, they're worse nightmares for Doctor York to get out because all, everybody's gig will be up. They've all they've all been trying to jockey for a position. First of all, that Ghana shit that they're saying, all oh, that's bullshit, because we, we strategize that. I mean, that's a whole, that, opening that mess now would take hours to get through. She's 100% right. That was all legal strategy. It's not gonna work. They're lying to this man now, saying they got a Ghana transfer for the last six months that he's gonna walk out of there. First of all, if no judge rules on it, a judge still got a rule on it. And they're telling him, oh no, because you're a diplomat, we don't have to do that. Well, you're still sitting there for, for the last six months and, you, and you're not walking out of there. That's just facts, okay? There's just so much bullshit and lies that nobody really wants to look Hold at on. this while, while I have what you it here, is. While I have you here, let's talk about the fake passport and all of that, the fake oh, birth certificate that yeah. I still got. Mm -hmm. And it was a whole different story to that. It's all fake. Oh yeah. you. Listen, you can go into jail, and the sad thing is, Dr. York will believe anything you tell him. You can yes. tell him the government of Wakanda is coming to get him, and he believes that somebody from Wakanda is coming to get him. You gotta understand, when you're in despair and hopeless like that, you'll believe anything anybody comes and tells you. Mm -hmm. They've told him so much stuff that was not true. Paperwork, you're born here, you're born there, you got citizenship here, they're coming to get you, we got paperwork done. They're not even factoring in when Muhammad and his mother were trying to go over there back in 05 to correct the whole diplomatic status thing because they're gonna sit there and tell you he's a diplomat. But really he was just an honorary general counsel. He was not, and they were trying to fix that and change that and put it on record. That's a whole nother story. And that's not really why I wanted to call in. I basically wanted to call in because I can validate and, and, and Leah knows because she was there. She used to go in and visit her father I was doing it for two, three years. I just saw stuff, like I say, it's just, it's incredible. Just, people just don't know what's, what's going on. It's just, it's a lot. And I'm glad that now it's bloodline family members because the only thing the followers are gonna say, oh, they're making it up. Oh, it's all lies. But if it's all lies, you gotta, you gotta prove some documentation to show that it's all lies. Mm -hmm. And Okay, there's no, this, I'll, say, I'll yeah. say another lie because somebody just remembered me. She was talking about how we had 12 year olds getting married. That was a lie, too. Nobody got married at 12 years old in a mosque, in no. a car days, or no. on the land. 
What's interesting no. is that's why I, I mean, I, the Nawabian nation, not to cut you off, brother, that's why I said Nawabi nation's like- No, 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 go ahead. It's, it's there, like, that's what I mean when I say they insulate him and they're milking him and they're manipulating him now. He's their prisoner, right? right? And I don't think people really get that. There's a group of people that's gotten around him and that's why I have a serious disdain for the whole Nawabian nation idea because it perpetuates his sickness. They gain from their association yeah. with him. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to, he's never going to, like I had somebody call me last year and say, could you call the Trump administration and get him a, and get him a, get him a pardon? I said, you guys got all the answers. Why can't y'all do it? Well, we, we, it's on Trump's desk, but he ain't signing it. Mm. What happened to all the stuff y'all talking about? Like I can really blow these people's spot up. It's, it's sad because I feel like they're a part of the demise of Pops. And they're making it worse. And the problem with these guys is they don't have an emotional tie to him. That's not their father. Mm. That's some guy that they, that's a mythical creature for them. So that's some guy that they they idolize as some deity. And I feel like he's a prisoner of that 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 not only him him being a prisoner in jail, but he's also a prisoner of this 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 idea that's been created by him or people around him. And he's trying to hold grip on power any way he can and trying to maneuver and manipulate and trying everything because he's literally hopeless. He'll never see the time of day. He'll never get out of jail. Right. That's the reality. And now, you know, day, that's not what the new Wabian nation is saying. They all no, believe that he will be out. And I want to say, how come none of the new Wabians is calling in right now? This is your chance to call in. But y'all talking all this mess in the chat. Call in where you can ask them now, straight up. Uh, some people are saying, um, Jacob, mm -hmm. that you really don't want Dr. York to come out. You're the one that put him in there. They're saying that you don't want him out for some reason. Why do you no, think no. they're accusing you of of that, brother? Of not wanting him out of jail? Yes. Because I don't want him out of jail. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. It's like, who, I don't <laughs> want him to come home. Why would I want him to come home? <laughs> Unless people can control him in this family. I think mm. the best thing for him is for him to be an old man. Because, you know, they shipped him to the to the old man side of the jail now. I think it's cool for him to be an old man and, and sit his life out there. Because if he comes out here, nobody's going to be able to control the monster that's gonna, that he's going to become. No one's going to be able to control him. Mm. What's going to happen to the victims and their family? When are they going to ever get closure if this Good point. Good point, brother. Like, mm. I sat with my family and I said, if I go out of my way to get this man out of jail, are we going to make sure that he apologizes to the victims? Are we gonna make sure he plays father? Mm -hmm. Is he gonna be the father, the grandfather, the great-grandfather, the uncle, the the, the, uh, the, uh, the the brother and the sister? Or is he gonna go back into Bushwick and start the madness all over again? Because scientifically they've proven that pedophilia is incurable. Mm -hmm. And so what are you gonna do? I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want it to get worse. I don't want more kids to get hurt. So unless we can find a way to insulate him from being able to commit more crimes and hurt more people, he should stay where he's at. But again, I, I take pride in the Nuwabian nation thinking I'm the president of the United States and I'm the attorney general. Because that means they have a lot of respect for my capability. Mm. That I have the power to put that man in jail. Because if he's Jesus Christ, how can I have the power over Jesus Christ? <laughs> if he's your deity, I have power over your deity. That makes me your real deal. I'm a super deity now to you now, right? Be intelligent. Y'all supposed to be smart. Be smart. No, I'll be in fact, if you was on earlier, you would have heard that. You would have heard me debunk that part. But let's keep it moving. I don't, I can't see who they are because if you don't have a page with your face on it, to me, right. you're, you, you, you're a meme. So stop talking to me. Talk to me if you had a face. At the end of the day, what I'm saying to you, brother, is no, I don't want that man to walk the streets and hurt more children. Do I want to be able to spend my life with my father sitting by my fireplace? Of course I do. I would love to have my father sit. I, my father can move in with me, but he's not going to stay here. He's not going to stay here. No matter how big my house is, no matter how much acreage I have, no matter how long, he's not going to stay here because he has a sickness. He's going to get sucked back into Bushwick and someone's going to get hurt. So it's better that he stays out of the reach of children and in custody than for him to run the streets. And, and, and the victims just, their lives get ruined. The victims' kids' lives get ruined. No one has closure. People like, it's not fair. I can't be selfish just because I want to be with my father. Right. I've never been selfish. Right. 
But no, I don't have the cape. Y'all, y'all, the Nawabians can sit there and promote whatever the Waki can promote whatever. They can all promote whatever the hell they want. They all have a life because he's in jail, and they have a, they have a mythical image that they can say our oppressed leaders and suck money out of people. I have siblings that do that, suck money and con people out of money every day in the name of their father. Because they didn't go out there and get a job or build an empire. Uh. They didn't go out there and do something with themselves. So they want to milk an organization. We've seen this happen. This ain't the first time this happened. You ever watched the uh, uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the documentary about the uh, not the Dalai Lama, the other guy? How he showed how people manipulated that guy. All religious leaders go through this. All leaders go through that where they become insulated by a group of people who manipulate it. And, and so I don't really think, I, you know, again, I would love to spend, my, me and my father laughed when we hung out with each other. We had fun talking to each other. We had a good time. I actually have a real relationship with my father. I would love that. I don't want him in jail, but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna let him hurt any more children. Right. I'm not. Thank you, yes. Wow. Ever. Hey, Sister Leah, uh, let me yeah. ask you. Um, they always say the elders always come and tell us time is life is short. Mm -hmm. Make the best out of it. Yeah. If your sister was to want to come to you and reconcile her differences and bow down to you and, and just beg you and tell you how sorry she is for all the misfortunes that y'all went through, would you forgive her and accept her back in? No, I don't make peace with Shaitan. I would have been going to say on the regime. Sorry. You don't understand. Like I keep trying to tell people, everybody who befriends her, everybody who invites her into their life, their life became becomes tarnished. Like, why would I want that for my life? People walk away from her and do great things. Like, do you not see the problem? Why would I want to invite that into my life? Like, you ever had that one person who they just drag people down no matter what? Mm. Like, you, they move away from them and all of a sudden their life is flourishing and you're like, that person was the problem. No, I wouldn't. I'm good. I'm happy. Like, my life, I'm bright. My life is good. Trust me. I have the relationship my, my that I have with the siblings and I'm good. My answer yeah, is different than good. My answer is that she answer? gets medical help if she goes and gets psychiatric help, denial. if she deals with her medical and, and psychological issues, then we can sit down and talk about it. She's in but denial But to bring people it, back so into your life, happening. to take rotten fruit and put it in with good fruit, you just rot, you're just gonna spoil the whole bunch. So right. if she makes an effort to change her life, if she makes an effort to go get psychiatric help, therapy, and help grow past some of the issues she has, I'll take the, I'll take the journey with her. And I'm sure Leah may consider, may. But like taking her the way she is right now, it's, you you will never understand how much of a headache that could possibly be for anybody. Right. And that's the problem that a lot of people don't understand. Like when you have a person in your family and I don't care who you are, you can have that drunk uncle, you can have that cousin who just start a fight with everybody. She always loud. She goes, when you have that person in your family, nobody is going to want to be around them. When things are good, nobody's going to want to invite them. Like, you, the person would have to fix themselves in order to. People have to want to see that. People have to see that person change in order to want something different for them. But if they don't see that there's a problem with themselves, how can they fix anything that they don't see is wrong with themselves? All right, man. We got a lot done. We got a lot covered. Um, does anybody anybody would like to close out? And um, hey, Jacob, I want to say to you, my brother, thank you for showing love. Thank you for coming to bless the platform. Thank you. And whenever you have anything that you would like to get out, brother, my casa, your casa, you can always come through and reach out to me, and the floor is yours, brother. Same with you, Sister Leah. Thank you. Leah. Thank yeah, you. You know, same with you. I don't know who the brother is on the phone, but it seems like he got a good connection. And, um, I would definitely extend that offer to you too, my brother. No, I appreciate it, Tyler. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, so All anybody right. would like to close out on this. And um, you're welcome to do a part two. If you still got stuff, you got to get out uh, of here. This you is a one get and it. done. This is a one and done because if people don't get everything that I've had to give from this first one, it's not meant for them to take it. It's meant for them to learn the hard way. And believe me, 
you will how know is your heart fu- how is fu Allah? faith uh fu Allah. fud Allah. yes how is um f-u-d yeah last i heard he was doing okay is there a okay. reason why you asked uh, yeah, somebody texted me and said, ask him how is so-and-so, I guess. Yeah, last I checked, he was doing okay. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, um, and y'all can close out. Um, close I definitely out for wanna, a minute, take I, your time, and just drop what you want to drop. I'm still closing with the fact that my mother never got with my father. Hold up, hold up, Le- hold up, Leah, Leah, hold up. I want yeah. York first to close out, because I'm going to let you go last, So you, because you're the, you the one that came in first, and I'm going to let you close out everything else that's on your mind. Okay. Go ahead, uh, brother Jake. Um, I don't really have anything to <clears throat> say. I came in to support Leah, um, yes. like I did yesterday to, you know, to Mkhev to just debunk some of the madness that's going on out there. I mean, what I want to say to people is you can sit around and you can perpetuate whatever negativity you want to perpetuate. That's your business. I'm not in here because I'm trying to change minds. I'm not in here because I'm trying to change experiences. I'm not in here because I'm trying to give you anything to validate or devalidate what you believe. I'm here to support my sister and tell the truth about what I experienced as a person who was a, within the hierarchies of this business. I went on after 1990 with the help of her mother, definitely giving me a couch to sleep on um, and other people who supported me to build my own empire and my legacy. So I don't, you know, you know, perpetuate anything negative towards my father. I don't have anything against my dad. I don't have anything against the Ansar Law community. I just think the Wabian Nation was just a stain on the legacy because it wasn't based in anything right and it was it was a it was an i it was it was the it was the the rambles of a, a man that was literally mentally ill like i mean he went to court and they they literally said you know after the 7 30 exam that he was schizophrenic right so that just tells you what you're talking about there and then a lot of the controls around him was gone a lot of people that had no information about him rose up in ranks and it just look where it ended up um Again, I can tell you how the FBI get access to him. I can tell you all the stories, but I mean, people are going to believe what they believe. You know, I think the most important part of this is, you know, we have to respect the victims of Pops. He has a group of victims and it's not just the children he touched. It's also their families. It's all those are the people that they are associated with. It's also his children. Some of his children are his victims. And what I mean by that is, Look at what they're going through, Mm -hmm. right? As a result of it, look at people in the communities that dedicated 30 years of their life to this, what they ended up with. You gotta understand, there are brothers that sat in the cold, stood guard in the snow, just to have their five-year-old kid molested as as, as an example of how he cared about them. Like, you gotta give these guys their respect. They dedicated, they went on the trains, they rain, sleet, hail, snow, promoting this, 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 this idea. So to be talking about one man above and beyond a nation of people that sacrificed says a lot about your character. Of course, Waki's going to say that because, you know, my dad stopped her from being a drug addict and gave her somewhere to stay. So of course she going to say it. Of course she going to support him. You get it? Jacob, so, what do you think about Ben Amin? Wasn't he doing the same thing? Ben Amin? Yes. Um, Why do I know ben what's Amin? his name? What's his name? Uh, help me out, y'all. What about Benjamin Carter? Help ben me out. Carter. The one that was in Miami. The one oh, who uh, you know, Yahweh, 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 yes. Yahweh, Yahweh, yes. yes, Yahweh, 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 ben Yahweh, Yahweh, ben Yahweh. Yes. Yeah. What do you think about Yahweh, Ben Yahweh? Is it like similar? Well, I think that I respect any or any black organization that worked to enlighten black people. Again, yes, but they were saying he started doing the same thing as well. I know what I'm saying is, once again, this is my philosophy. The cult of the personality is the problem, not always the teachings or the education. People get preoccupied with Elijah Muhammad screwing his weight, his 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 assistants, and not about what the message he was promoting. Mm-hmm. Right? People get caught up in Malachi York instead of Imam Issa. And they get caught up in the cult of personality or what he did in his personal life or what he did to children and not the teachings of Islam and cleanliness and vegan eating and all of that. So again, I separate the man from the teachings, right? Because if we really dig up on all these other religious leaders, we ain't gonna be believing nobody. 
because a lot right. of stuff that went down our ancestors did a lot of stuff egyptians did a lot of stuff sumerians did a lot of stuff moors did we wouldn't agree with mm. right so i i ignore sometimes I, I tell people to get away from the cult of the personality if you want to continue to promote and so law community nubian nation nubian islamic people and those teachings that's fine you don't have to follow the guy i, I can like r kelly's music and not like what he did to children i separate the two Right. So I don't get caught up in, 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 in both being the same thing, because, you know, sometimes some of the most I mean, Prophet Muhammad had a nine year old wife. People tend to ignore that. Right. And he has like, one point seven billion people that follow him, but he had a nine year old wife. Mm. So, again, if we begin to get caught up in what these people did in their personal life, we're really not going to like religion at all. We're not going to like way of life at all. We're not going to like half the stuff we eat. We're not going to like what we sleep in. We're not going to like the people that built this camp. We're not going to like the people. The people that built the iPhone that I'm on right now are racist. So let's turn off the iPhone. The people that built YouTube. So in other words, let me find out with you. The guy that built this YouTube platform, if you found out that he was up there, he was a cannibal, would you stop using YouTube? Good point, bro. Good point. And so we have to be able to separate the piece. I find that, that the Nawabi Nation is a cult of personality, not a way of life sometimes. It's gotten too, too caught up in him when the Nubian Islamic Cuba was about a way of life. We had actual rules and regulations that guided our life. Literally the opposite of, we never deified him. He was specifically not deified on purpose. Where now he's deified. He walks through walls now. He <laughs> did it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say we separate the two. I think the yeah. I think the Nawabia Nation is a is a is a is a shit stain. On, you know, I like that point you is. made. I like the point you made with R. Kelly. Yes. You don't agree with his behavior, so that means you should dislike the music. I like that because you know what happened with R. Kelly. He got found guilty on all like nine um ch yes. count charges. Mm -hmm. So you had people talking about, oh, we need to get rid of the music. I was saying to myself, man, I mean, you can't take away. R. Kelly's um, writing skills and how he was writing his music. Yes, I like. I, I agree with you on that. I dislike what he have done to them kids, to them, to them women. But damn, you can't take away the music. I'm not gonna that stop he, listening he to the music unless the music was that. used to molest. If yeah, it was he was a genius. Guy, I might be like, nah, that song don't have the same feeling to me. But I'm not gonna stop listening to Ignition because R. Kelly molested. I mean, I knew Aaliyah. She was a close friend of mine. She told me she was molested by R. Kelly. You understand my point? So I know that. I worked with Aaliyah. You know what I'm trying to say? But right. that didn't stop me from listening to R, R. Kelly's ignition. I just never chose to fuck with him again after that. I never talked to him again after that. I never dealt with him personally after that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when it comes to music, music is music. Again, I think that we bring down, we start peeling away at everything we walk around with. We'll find something wrong with every single person that's built something in society. That's a fact. And we'll yep. just be standing in an empty field looking at the sky at some point if we just start canceling every single person that's done something wrong. Because I like Kellogg cereal. And guess what? That guy was a racist prick who promoted eugenics against black people. Right? Mm. But, but I like Kellogg right. cereal. I'm going to get right. up the whole Kellogg catalog. <laughs> right. Right. I like Quaker Oats. Like, I, think, I, think, I think in a nutshell, it's something we used to say years ago. You got to learn to separate the message from the messenger. That's it. Period. It's that simple. And if you choose to want the message, stick to the message. Let the that. messenger go. My biggest issue, that's as it. I've said for years, is if if you if you truly believe in the message, then why are you not helping the, the victims of the net of, of 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 the organization or the people who are looking for guidance to continue the message on? All y'all doing is spending your entire time trying to get a guy out of jail, hmm. and all that money could have went into therapy for kids, vocational programs. Getting money together to get a new Jazir Abba, so kids and, and pooling together to get safe spaces and black uh, land and building infrastructure, the message itself that we fought for. Where's that? All I keep hearing is let's raise money to get a guy out of jail. That money never gets him out of jail. People who are raising the money gets richer. And a group of organizations are looking at Jacob, Leah, everybody else is the fault. While other people are building houses and opening up stores on the benefit of getting a guy out of jail, they know won't get out of jail. Because even if he got out of federal jail, the state will still get him. Mm. And that's a fact. And the state had more charges. 
They have way more charges. They had a thousand years worth of charges. So if he beat the sick federal charges, that's all the president could do is beat the federal charges. State charges are going to slap on him. Right. And, as as and so it's BS what home. they're doing. They're raising money against his name. Instead of saying, let's put together this pool of money, and let's buy a land, let's buy, build tiny homes, let's start building uh, 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 ecosystems, let's move there, create retirement for some of the brothers and sisters that's worked their whole life, and invest in, 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 in financial freedom with them, educate the kids, move us into the next future. Right. No, let's not raise money to keep a building going in, 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 in Bushwick while other people are buying houses in DC and buying houses in Atlanta and all that stuff. Pops is not, and they keep gassing Pops into believing something. If he goes out there, he does speeches to followers, write letters to people, and at the end of the day, nothing good comes out. I mean, I say overall, there is people who he has impacted their life for positive. You know what I mean? So it might have been people that was on drugs. <clears throat> like, they got yes. cleaned up and had a better life. Like, well, there are people who... There are people who... It's the truth. Why you know hey that's listen i'm, be, I'm being honest you want to tell the truth let's tell the truth it's a lot of people whose life wanna, has impacted and helped if, if, right i want to i just want to add something in there if you really if you really look and when you guys were talking about earlier about different circles of members when you really look a lot of us came in because we didn't have father figures if you look at majority of the inner circle of the community it was people that came not all but majority came from broken families oh, yeah. broken parent households we were searching for something and the message at that time i know when i came in in the 80s that's what i was looking for mm. so the message it, it, it was there it captivated you and and obviously york has that gift of gab he, he, he's a good speaker and when you're young it recruited a certain mindset but when you look at it as a whole if you look at all the inner members there's the sad thing there's no long term financial plan for the Nawapian nation mm. and this is just facts you oh, if you look they're all still doing the same shit they were doing back then they're selling comic books on the corner still they're little trinkets there's no long-term plan and just what jacob said i know many brothers that died with nothing abby yaya for an example who was always given the first title of the first student to dr york or imam isa that man died sick with nothing and nobody gave a shit. That's just one. It I can run down a list. His idea. He, Doc was his right. I mean, Doc was his student. It was mm -hmm. quick. Uncle Yaya was the right. first came up with it all. Let's, right. let's give him his credit. Right. My father was the learned it from, my, from Yaya. Let's be clear. That's good. You're right. You're right. And, and, and he's one of many elders with Jacob Sam. People gave their, I mean, I came in out of high school. I, I came straight in 17 years old, moved right in the community. Gave up, and it's my choice. And I don't I don't hold anybody, everything I did, I, I made those choices on my own. So I don't hold Dr. York responsible. Um, uh, anything that I went through and the people, these were conscious decisions we made. So I'm, I'm not saying it in regards to that. But what I'm what I'm saying is there is no plan. It's It's, they shack up in apartments, they live together, they're still living like they were living back then, but just in a more modern modern day time. It's a cult mentality, it breeds failure. And this is the problem. And if you look at the outer circle members who are influential, that got money and power, they ain't part of that inner circle shit. Right. Professional people, it was always like that. Yeah, there was people that read books that were entertainers, lawyers, doctors, but they weren't part of that community shit. We were the ones. We were the foot soldiers on the street that dealt with all this shit that we're talking about. And I can attest to everything we're saying. Standing, doing guard, we hours of the... I, I, I felt... Place. We were lucky if we would get two, three hours of sleep a night. Mm -hmm. Winter, spring, summer, fall. And all that stuff is true. If you didn't make money peddling, going to the green room, you had to make an appointment to fuck your wife. That's mm -hmm. a reality. I can attest to that. I was there. And if you weren't making enough of money, you may not have saw your wife for a couple of weeks. That's just how it was. And I and I always pose this question now. You got to understand, people will always say stuff like, well, why are you talking that shit now? You were there for so many years. You got to understand when you're embedded in that mentality and your mindset, you're not thinking like that at that time. But when you step outside the box and you're looking at it, it's not, oh, you're bitter. You're bitter. I'm not bitter about anything. I don't, I don't, this is why I haven't really addressed or talked about any of this in a couple of years because it's like Leah said if 
they're gonna think what they people are gonna want to think what they want to think regardless. If you can't get it, you can see here to your blue in the face. It's, it's just pointless. But my, my whole point is that yeah, good, good, brother. that whole mentality. Good, good. Nah, my my point is all these things that that you know Jacob is bringing up, that Leah is bringing up. People really have sacrificed their life for this. Not not that we're owed anything, but there's a lot of things that have gone on in history. People just don't don't have the big picture. And and again, you can talk about it to you blue in the face. People still don't want to believe, you know, what they want to believe. And it is what it is. All right, but, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Leah, take mm -hmm. us home, close out for us. And um, whatever you forgot that you want to say, it's, it's your chance right now. Oh. I can't the hear anybody. Can you Say hear that you? again. He can't hear nobody. You can't hear nobody, bro. So, can you still hear? Take up. Go out and come back in. That's all. He's on mute. You're on mute. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're off. I can't mute. hear anything. You oh. can't hear nobody. Yeah, he can't hear nobody. Go out and come back in, Jacob. So, oh, this is the closing anyway. Yeah, go ahead. So there was... Um, Thank you, brother, on the call. Different things I'm All definitely right. going to talk about where at the end of Tahaka's show, he was saying, tell your mother thank you. And I appreciate for her linking us up. My mother never linked him up with her. My mother <laughs> oh, made it wow. very clear that she never met him. They never talked to each other. And she was just like, tell him not to even mention me because... I had no nothing Why to do with them Why do you think he too. said that? Why did Tahaka say that? The first when I heard it, the first thing I did was call her, and I'm like, "Why would you have somebody connected to drag you?" Well, I mean, let me tell you what he said to me. He called me early in the morning, and he said, "Yo, Sarnetta, you need to thank me." I said, "Thank you for what?" He said, "Well, um, Leah called in, and I told Leah that I ain't got no time right now to bring her on." So I told her to go on over there to Sarnetta. Oh, hold on. <laughs> this is my word if I'm lying. See? To Hunker, he's watching right now. But I knew, I already knew who brought you. I already knew who got you to come over. So when he said that, I'm like, yeah, all right, Tahaka. This is why I keep messages and stuff. Damn, Tahaka, you got to stop this lying, brother. I, and I hate a liar. Um, I asked him that I wanted to get in to debunk some of the lies that she was saying. Mm -hmm. And his message was, no, we, you could come on tomorrow. I don't want this all out war. And I'm like, oh, I told um, Chuck, I said, connect me with Sonetta. Bump there you team. go. See? Like, you don't, <laughs> this is my thing. Most people uh -huh. don't know me. You can burn me once. That's the only chance you get. There There's you no go. second chance. We don't do baseball fields here. You don't get three strikes and you're out. You're mm -hmm. out and that's why time. I said thank you to um, Chuck. Cause I already knew Chuck is the one and that called King me. Simon. And King Simon had a lot to do with it. Cause right. I was supposed to call you days ago, but in me and my head thinking, oh, this is gonna die down. But it never died down. Mm -hmm. um, another thing was still, like I said, my mother and my father never got together at 17. Everybody that know my mother knows she got five kids and she had two children on top of me. If I'm his oldest with my mother, she had me at 21. No. Yeah. It was about 21. You figure my father was... That's a whole nother thing. But she was not underage. She was a grown woman. Um, the whole... Just the different things. I mean, overall, my whole thing was just to set the, the record straight on a lot of the timelines and things not making sense. I mean, and overall, I'm just like, if people are going to get on to hock the show... And, and even a part where she turned around and was, and was, your name was all in it in the beginning. It's like, how he get in it? To come find out it wasn't true. So people should have been asking at that point, well then if she dragged his name into this, how many other people's names does she have wrong? How many other people is not who she's calling them out to be and everything like that? So I'm just like, overall people just need to, First of all, stop cash apping her. She's telling y'all she got all this money. Why y'all cash apping her? First of all, if y'all are smart, invest your money into stock, into crypto. Do something else with it. Stop Talk donating. to us about crypto. You you invested in crypto? What? And it, it's mean, really working? You don't want to see my portfolio, but we're going to move on. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, wow, man. It's really working for you? You know, originally, I know this is not about socks, but right. originally I was invested in socks and my husband was like invested in crypto. He was in Bitcoin and Ethereum when it was like next to nothing. And I'm like, one day I just saw having to wake up next to him and I'm looking at his portfolio and I'm like, I'm selling all my spots and I'm going to the crypto side. You know what I mean? But well, maybe one day we could do a show on something positive like that where you could come and teach or you and your husband together could come and teach about it. that. He, he's he's good with like investment and money. I always say he, he's my digital calculator because he gets he gets the numbers right for stuff. But mm. I tell you overall, it you know, the black community in itself, y'all need to start investing. Start buying property. Start putting money away for your children because that's where it's going to count. All this extra stuff, start buying up properties. Y'all got a bunch of people out here buying Airbnbs, and but guess what? They renting those Airbnbs in a couple of years. They're gonna own that house with no nothing. They're gonna have the deed. That over the years is gonna flip into more money, you know. And the sad thing is, people keep saying, "Well, you know, a lot of people left the community with nothing." Yeah, they did. And here you are, two, three generations later. If y'all still have nothing, who are you still blaming? You got to educate yourself. These days, the internet has a worldwide of information. There's no excuses at this point. It is not like it was back then where we didn't have computers. Well, we had computers, but it wasn't internet like this and things like that. You know, okay. overall, yeah. everybody, they running over there because they want to go for whatever is great. I mean, yeah, it might have helped his ratings, but at the same time, how much of it was the truth? Okay, you ran around and you was able to gossip about it for a little while. Who did you really hurt behind it? Like, it sounds great, but know the truth before you go on here and drag people. Know the truth before you come out here calling people's names. Know the truth. Because y'all really, a lot of people really don't know her, don't know the situation, don't even know our family. Yeah, we have a, it's a huge family. But most of y'all don't know our family. So I'd appreciate it. Y'all stop putting our name in your mouth. Hmm. Unless it's the truth. Unless you have confronted that York and they confirmed what you are saying. Because most of the time, if you're calling them one-on-one, -on -one, it won't even be a conversation on this platform. You're seeking attention and that's okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, if your modeling career is so great, you're seeking attention, go to the, back to the modeling career. I don't get it. Like, why come to him for him to keep gossiping about you? Because technically, the way I see it is he's using you. But you'll see that over time. Because once your, 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 this whole thing dies down, what's next for him? Check yourself. Because technically speaking, you have people sitting up here talking about your mother, your father, however which way it goes. Either way, like I tell people, I was a hell child, but either way, nobody could ever say when I was younger that I cursed around my mother, that I disrespect. I was the people used to go to my mother and be like, you know, your daughter did this. She was like, not my child. That's how respectable I was around her. Because guess what? At the end of the day, you still gonna have to answer to your ancestors, even when you leave out of this planet. Reality check. that i want to thank you my sister for coming blessing the platform thank and, um, you i appreciate you even giving me yes. that platform don't hesitate to reach out in case you need to come back and air out some more stuff ah. <laughs> the floor <laughs> is open um, on whatever it ain't got to be about the same thing it's just whatever you, you know, know what i'm saying i always say black people build your family trees get yeah. to know who your ancestors are it is very important I build trees for people who are adopted and come to find out after I build these DNA trees, they're messing with, they had children by their own cousin. Okay, get to know who your family members are. Let your children know who their grandparents are. It is very important because you'll find that a lot of, you know, they, they call it endogamy. It's like a small community, well, what you would see in a community. A small community of people keep having children with each other. Eventually, you know, they get tainted DNA because it's like layering over DNA of the same kind. People need to build their family trees. Get to know your family.
discuss this stuff with your children. Let them know who their parents are and were because guess what? What you'll see on or be half of the stuff that people tell them is not the truth. Look for these old family Bibles. Look for stuff like this because that's where your history is. Not this thank other you. stuff. All right. And with that, thank you, my sister. Appreciate you. Thank have you. A, I appreciate you. Yes. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Peace.